Yo, what is going on, Vapo fam? Welcome back to another build. I am so excited for today's video. You guys have no idea the amount of work I put into these builds back to back to back. They're getting better and better and they're getting bigger and more complex. And AI is involved now and we're using ChatGPT4. Crazy stuff. Let me know where you're watching from right now. Let me know if you're excited to be back on the streams. You know how we do it. We're going to for weekly videos right now. So smash that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you haven't already. And get ready for one hell of a fun build. Get ready for this, guys. We are building the GPT-4 weather app powered with open AIs, GPT-4. We're using Next.js 13.2. We're using TypeScript. We're using Tremor 2.0. We're using all the good stuff right here. I see everyone tuning in. Let's take a look at the, let's take a look at the demo right now. Check this out, guys. Boom. Naturally, I had to start off with Dubai. Look at this. Hey, I can see everyone tuning in. We have Nigeria, LA, Dubai, Czech Republic, Cameroon, France, Philippines. That's what I'm talking about. We're hitting millions of views on this channel every month. That's crazy. Look at this, guys. We've got a lovely, lovely weather wrap right now. And this is something I want everyone to have on their bloody portfolio because it's such a good way to showcase your skill set. Fully responsive build. Look at this. Works perfectly on a phone. We've got these lovely, nice graphs that are dynamic, responsive. Look at that. It just looks absolutely beautiful. I just skipped through a different page. There we go. And guys, something I want you to pay close, close attention to is this right here. This is literally not me writing this. This is a generated GPT-4 prompt that is gone ahead and being created based on the weather information. So you have a full news report. This is Sunny reporting live from the Papa Fam headquarters in Dubai, bringing you the latest update on the weather conditions in our beautiful city. And it goes ahead and literally breaks down the weather. Now let's go ahead and do a little demo of this. Let's go to the United Kingdom and we're gonna go to my first home, London. Boom, and wait for it, look at that. Super fast, dynamic, Oh, it's just so beautiful. And this is all working off Next.js 13.2. We have the, the chat GPT API. StepZen is powering this. So yes, we're using a GraphQL interface. If you're wanting to learn that, this is the video for you. We have Tremor 2.0 for these beautiful UI pieces like right there, like you can see here, all these, these little lovely little call outs and these nice little cards, everything that you can see here, Tremor 2.0, Tailwind CSS to style it all. And just look at that guys, absolutely beautiful and it's actually really useful like it actually works really really useful brian says this could be my first app for my domain hosted in aws 100 dude i don't see why not this is absolutely amazing of a first build to go ahead and do so we're going to go back to the united arab emirates and let's go to somewhere else let's go down to um let's do Kalba, right and look if we don't have the information it's going to have a dynamic fetch so right now what's happening is it's crunching the numbers it's generating an ai summary using the gpt open ai api and then just very shortly boom just like that it has it and what it will do now is it caches that page so that the next time we go back to this page super fast right so if i go back a screen look at that london super fast for the screen calibre and then it's going to revalidate that page every 60 seconds or whatever the hell you want to set it to so that way no user will ever have to wait that long time again so absolutely incredible this is honestly like now we're hitting builds which are just in a different league of complexity in regards to how, what they can do. I'm gonna make everything easy for you. So you can feel free to follow this along if you're a beginner, but let's go ahead and break down some of the tech stack right here. We have GPT-4. You guys know how we do it. I have access to it. You can also just for so that way, you know, in case you don't have access yet to GPT-4, completely fine. You can do this entire build with GPT-3.5 Turbo and it just works just as good. So don't worry about it, right? You can actually do it with all of those things as well. Let's go ahead and show you showcase StepZen. So StepZen is the guys that have made this video possible. It's how I'm able to go ahead and take this incredibly like complex data from, quite honestly, it's a lot of data that we're gonna get from this API. It's called Open Meteo. It's a free weather API, and this thing gives us a huge dump of information. And we're gonna go ahead and pull it through with a beautiful GraphQL interface. And StepZen is taking all the complexity out of it. Now, what is StepZen? It allows us to build GraphQLs easily, right? So we can build a GraphQL backend super, super easily. And we can do it with a simple CLI command. They have support for things like MySQL, 
Postgres databases, NoSQL, REST, or just if you just want to have a curl request and then you want to go ahead and, you know, you want them to do the hard work, they do it, right? So it's very easy to go ahead and use it. They automatically generate our schema, do all of that hard stuff for us. And then we have a really nice dashboard that we can go ahead, log into, do all that good stuff. Now, you also get up to 300,000 monthly requests for free. You get email chat support included and you get 10 backends just in their free plan. So if you go ahead and sign up in the first link in the description, we've got a little treat for you over there. So make sure you go ahead and do that. It also helps the Papa Farm grow. So make sure when you're signing up to Step 10 at this part of the build, then you can go ahead and sign up with the first link in the description. So make sure you check it out and we can go ahead and get started. Now, I have something new in this build, which I haven't actually used before. Tremor. 2.0. Now, Jay introduced me to this. I actually love this thing. It is so nice and clean. Frank, what is up, man? I see you in the chat. Good to see you in the house. Look at this. We have a React component library. I get so many, like, so much demand for this, right? I have so much demand for, can you use a component library? And I was waiting to find one which perfectly integrated with Tailwind CSS, with Next.js, so that way we don't have to mess around with the kind of, you know, you, uh, like we're battling between Tailwind CSS and component libraries typically, not anymore. This is where Tremor 2.0 came in. It's absolutely phenomenal. You guys can see here, we have these beautiful looking components. So you guys can see like, we've got these lovely components. You've got these little tabs. You've got all everything you need for kind of a dashboard. Look at these. And what I love the most is honestly, not just the fact that it's really beautiful to look at. I also love the fact that it's so simple to actually implement. So you guys will thank me so much because if you've ever used anything like Chart.js or any of those kind of React Chart um, modules, you'll find that sometimes it can be a little bit complicated, but I'm going to make it super, super easy. Quick little demo one more time to showcase you guys how fast this website is. Bam, just like that, we get a brand new AI summary. So really, really powerful. Somebody says, is this really live? You're damn right it's live. <laughs> okay, so we got loads of good stuff coming. Now, I'm going to be moving at a fairly decent speed in this video. But remember, it's going to be up on the channel forever afterwards. So do not worry if you need to go ahead and pause. I might always add timestamps to the video. But remember, guys, if you want to go ahead and take your beginner level skills all the way up until you're getting your first job that kind of leads reach in that kind of you know pro level then definitely come and join us at popperreact.com forward slash course and you can join our community and course zero to four stack hero go ahead check it out for yourself all the links are in the description and i'll let the, the i'll let the video do its own, its own talking right see some of our members for yourself they absolutely love it and i can hands on heart say we've had over a thousand students now land jobs absolutely crush it and take their skill set from beginner levels all the way to land in their first jobs. And I can honestly like say that is my biggest achievement in my life so far to see that many students success, like succeed. So absolutely incredible. We have so many modules inside of here, over a hundred hours of content. Check it out, zero to full stack hero. You will not be disappointed. And before, if you haven't already heard about this, don't forget to check out the University of Code. Every single day I am sending out little challenges in your inbox and you can go ahead and check them and receive them for absolutely free if you go ahead and sign up right so signing up to the university of code is a monthly subscription for that uh, package and you basically get new brand new coding challenges every day with the solution the next day so I mean, I don't know, what, what, what more do you want? You have a full course, full, full, full community, and you have an entire YouTube channel full of free builds. So you know how we do it. Also, welcome Sohail Tehrani to the Pop Fam special tier. Good to see you, man. We have Ghana in the house. This is amazing. And guys, I just want to say, I read every single one of your comments and I damn well appreciate every single one of you. So this is going to be an absolutely huge build today. And yeah, we have so much to cover. And I'm going to go ahead and start things off by getting a little breakdown on the screen so that way you guys can see what we're about to build. So what I want to do here, I had um, <laughs> I was teaching a few things before. So what we're going to do here, and I was actually teaching that inside of Zero to Full Stack Hero. We run coaching calls there. So if you want to be a part of that, link in the description to join our community. Check this out. We also have some members in the chat right now. That's what I'm talking about. Jay, screenshot that. Giancarlo says, I started following Sunny five years ago and I seriously started a React journey. Uh, a year ago, I received a software engineering position and I received a weekly offers over 80K. Thank you, Sonny. I love you. I love you too. Jay, screenshot that. That is absolutely phenomenal. That is the Papa Fam energy that we are talking about. That is absolutely amazing. So, hell, I see you, dude. Thank you for those comments. Right. So, what does this build consist of? We've got React in the house. We have Next.js, 
13.3 in the house, right? So we're actually using the brand new API routes. So if you want to know how to use those, this is the right place to be. We are using GPT-4 in today's video, but don't stress, you can use 3.5 Turbo, so you don't need that early access if you haven't got, so, uh, got it yet. We're going to be using steps then to build a GraphQL endpoint, right? So we're going to be using a GraphQL endpoint, which will then be powered by something called Apollo, right? Then we have the Tremor 2.0 library. This is going to allow us to create this beautiful looking UI that you see right here. Then we've got Tailwind CSS. So if you don't know what this is, oh boy, you're in for a treat. I'm going to teach you all about it. Then we have TypeScript. And finally, we're going to be deploying it on our amazing Vercel platform, right? So this, this is going to be deployed afterwards. I'm going to show you how you can actually get this live and up because I want you all to have this on your portfolio because it is beautiful. And it's a perfect demonstration of how you are using AI techniques with the latest and greatest like Next.js 13.3, Steps and, you know, Tailwind CSS, TypeScript, that good stuff. So let's go ahead and jump into today's video remember if you haven't already check us out at zero to full stack hero and check out the university of code i promise you you will not be disappointed now first thing we're going to do is start our app so let's go ahead and i think it's time to push into this build so i'm going to go ahead mix up the music a little bit if you sign up to the newsletter in the description you actually get the entire newsletter i always get people ask me this i literally get this question all the time okay so what we're going to do now is if you haven't joined any of the streams before we're going to get into a flow state we're going to start coding we're going to build this project out bit by bit and i'm going to show you my thought process as to how you are going to go ahead and craft this incredible app yourself okay and i'm going to break it all down don't worry about it we're going to do this very strong okay first thing i want you to do is run this command now if you haven't got mpx you're going to need to install node okay in this case i've already got it now I'm, i like to actually use at canary instead of the uh, latest but you can feel free to use whatever the hell you want all right so in this case i'm going to open up my terminal now if you're using on windows you can use that i'm going to use the terminal on mac i like to put everything in an organized fashion so i like to put it inside of my build folder there we go and then i'm going to go ahead and run that command so at canary that's what i like to do then we're going to give it a name right now you don't even have to put a name here but i'm going to go ahead and give it a name i'm going to say this is going to be the step zen weather app youtube okay hit enter to kick the start things off now you should get a prompt now i want you to understand that if you're watching this video in the future there is a high chance that yes you might have a different prompt popping up right now or it may not work don't stress out, okay? Just use the Create Next App template and then install things like TypeScript and Tailwind CSS following the instructions on the website. I really get that a lot of the time. So definitely don't stress out when you kind of get that, uh, that that situation. Joseph says, so the idea for you to talk about uh, negotiation with clients and knowing your value as a dev. Joseph, we actually talk about that in, in Zero to Full Stack Hero pretty much every single coaching call, which is every Wednesday. So check it out. Link is in the description. All right, would you like to use TypeScript with this project? Yes. Would you like to use ESLint with this project? Yes. Tailwind CSS? Yes. Would you like to use the source directory? No. And would you like to use the experimental app directory? I want to use it, so yes. Import aliases, these are amazing. This is how you can import more efficiently. We're gonna click yes. And then we're gonna go ahead and let it do its thing, right? So Jay just dropped a link in the chat right now to go ahead and uh, join our course. Make sure you go ahead and check it out. I honestly can't stress enough. I'm so damn proud of that community. We have the best, best, best family of developers on the planet, period, right? I, I, I promise you that it's hands down the best, okay? Uh, let's go ahead and wait for this to get started. A lot of the time what you might have found was the old template that I used to use stopped working. And yes, I experienced that as well. So that's why sometimes you might have to use a different template. In this case, I'm using this one right now, okay? So let's check this out. So we're now gonna CD into that new directory. So CD step zen weather app dash YouTube. Okay, now I'm inside. Then I'm gonna go ahead and type in code dot. This will bring up my code editor, which is VS code. And it will give me my starter template. Now what I want you to do is open up a separate window or a second screen if you have one and basically set up your window so you can effectively work in such a fashion okay now the first thing i also want you to do is go ahead and you can remove that that's fine i'm going to make it a little bit bigger so you guys can see what i'm doing 
let me know give me some feedback if that's all good and we're going to be using next.js 13 so as you can see we have the new app directory whereby everything inside of it is a server component okay so to spin this app up first things first we're going to go to app then we're going to go to the page.tsx and as you can see there's some code in here now i want you to do the following i'm actually going to cut off my previous app because it was running i'm going to go to output and i like to simply close that one and close the debug console to make it very clean i'm going to close my previous app that was running I have taken screenshots for reference so that way we can actually go ahead and do it um, pretty nicely right give me one second okay so at this point now we're going to go ahead and if we do command b you can see we have a package json now if you have a yarn lock file you will be using yarn i'm using npm so in this case npm run dev this will spin up my app on my local host 3000 okay so at this point i want to allow it yeah because we are using typescript and then i want to go ahead and pop this open so i want to have if i about go back here i'm going to create a new chrome um, window pull it over here and then i'm going to go to localhost 3000 now what we should see here as you can see it's running in my server over here we should see our first starter template now if you're at this point well done give yourself a pat on the back because honestly some people can get messed up in this area so make sure you get to this point very well what the hell just happened whoops game just dropped in a 10 euro donation thank you dude that is awesome he goes hey son you're awesome i love your projects would love to see a project with super base and pg vector jay screenshot that because that way i can go ahead and actually give that a try but thank you i appreciate you and uh yeah i'm gonna buy some sushi tonight with that <laughs> so thank you very much now what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep this open and we're gonna clean things up so our first things first everything inside of the main we're gonna go ahead and delete so we're gonna scroll all the way down go to the div and we're gonna get rid of it all right i'm gonna type in h1 and then we'll say let's build a gpt4 weather app all right this music is sick oh my god another one. Oh yeah. wow okay i'm a pop star that, that's when the music doctor. comes in <laughs> that's the super chat all right illusion for hey sunny i'm getting errors okay we're not gonna cover it errors in the chat right now so let's build a gpt4 weather app now at this point you should see this what i want you to do is we're going to have a clean slate so i'm going to clear out the class names and i'm also going to clear out anything up here so you should have a very clean uh section right here now because you can see here it's black you might be wondering but i don't have any styles so first thing you want to do is head over to globals.css and i want you to go ahead and delete everything underneath these three lines okay now what you'll see is you should get back to a if we refresh you should have a white screen with a very blank uh text piece of text at the top okay kakashi says do you work for some company or do you own your do you have your own i have my own and it's called the papa fam as you could have guessed right so yeah we have our own company and this is what we do all right so now one thing you should be aware of is you just want to make sure obviously it was working for us but here you want to go ahead and type in something like text uh, six excel just see that it's working okay so these these are utility classes and this is the power of tailwind now if you are, haven't got these auto complete so for example when i'm typing in you see these auto completes that we have right here then you're going to need to go ahead and install the following so you want to go ahead and type in tailwind and what you want to do is grab the first one here. So Tailwind Insert. Oh my God. Tailwind CSS Intelligence. I, I see you. Oh wow. We got more donations. Mr. Frank, I appreciate you. This is so sick. It goes a $10 donation. My contribution to the Papa React Sushi Fund. The worst thing is I'm going to die as well. But thank you so much. I appreciate you, man. That's so cool. Uh, Frank's always representing. Absolutely legend, right? So at this point, we're going to go ahead and uh, install that, which we've already done. And I also want you to get this one. I always mention it every time because it's just such a good um, uh, extension. But here, the ES7 React Redux snippets, okay? Make sure you do this. This will allow us to create files very, very fast. Now, we're going to take a sort of a nice breakdown structure to this app, okay? So what I've done is I've actually created a few screenshots for reference. And I'm going to go ahead and pull those screenshots up right now. So what I want to do right here is I'm just going to go ahead and uh, pull up my screenshots and then I'll bring it onto screen so that way we can see it. So here I have some design references. So here we have the entire website. So as you can see, 
this will be like the city name at the top we have our lovely sort of you know our chat gpt summary then we have our different statistics now this is a really good build now like the what's the main purpose of this build one you're using things like graphql you're creating your own graphql interface secondly you're creating an admin dashboard like experience for your user but you're making it more interesting because you're adding the element of ai involved and what you're going to then show employers or anyone who's looking at this front inside of your portfolio is your ability to you know take on the latest and greatest bits of tech bring it together and build something really beautiful so do not underestimate this build okay then we have the mobile U, uh, ui so in this case you can see that this one will look really nice on a phone so i'm going to go ahead and pull it up like this you can see everything sort of stacks up on top of each other on the phone so we're going to go ahead and build that as well and then we have the loading weather information screen so this will be the very simple home page if you haven't selected any city but otherwise it will go ahead and pull up the city view all right so this is going to be the main city view that you'll be seeing inside of this build and do not be underestimated this is a very big build okay we have actually a lot to do here so we have we have to get very busy right now so we have hundreds of people watching across platforms this is absolutely incredible okay so first things first what are we going to do we're going to go ahead and actually keep that reference open because that was very silly i need that reference so i'm going to go ahead and open up another screen here and pull this over here okay and now we're going to keep this in frame and what I want to do is my first screen. Let's actually conquer something like this, right? So I want to actually build out this sort of drop down menu. Now, the whole purpose of this drop down menu is I should be able to select a country. And then what I will see, and remember, it's a reusable component. So the same component is being used here. I will select the country and then it will show me the city and I will be able to select a city inside of that country. Now, after that happens, it should redirect me to the page in which you see right here. So first things first, I think we should knock out the home page. OK, so that's exactly what we're going to do. So the home page, let's go to our page.tsx. And then at the home page, we are going to go ahead and start building things out now. Uh, where did I go? Yeah, so here. Now, as you can see, these elements right here, this is actually called a card element from Tremor UI, right? So that Tremor 2.0. And I'm actually going to go ahead and get that up and running right now. So for this page element, I'm actually going to convert it to a client side component. You can actually, you know, you can actually pretty easily wrap what I'm about to do inside of a client component instead of making the entire page. But for the essence of time, we're going to go ahead and keep it fairly straightforward. Now, the second thing is the only reason I'm doing this as well is because Tremor 2.0 has not been updated yet to support uh, client components out of the box. So that way we, we have to tell it it's explicitly a client component. So what I'm going to do is go to tremor.so and I'm going to install Tremor. So installation, you can see, if we go to Next.js, you can see, as you, as you can see here, so since we have not fully migrated to Next.js 13, you need to go ahead and use the, um, wrap your Tremor code in another component by using the use client directive. Okay, so we've already done these steps. We're gonna install Tremor into our project. Okay, so let's go into our project, Command J. And I'm gonna split my terminal. In fact, I'm just gonna open a second terminal. So the first one's got my server running and the second one, I'm gonna say npm install Tremor React. Okay, so once that's done, we are then going to go ahead and we've already done the Tailwind setup because that was already in the template. We then need to actually go ahead and extend our content here like so. So we need to grab this selection right here. Really nice. And then we're going to go to our Tailwind config. And you can see where we have our content. We're actually just going to paste that line. And what this is doing is it's including Tremor files in that transpilation, right? So when it sees any Tailwind utility classes, it's also going to go ahead and convert those as well. So that's what we've got to do there. That's done. Nice. We've already got this set up pretty neat and we can just start our run our server, which is great. Okay. Now you can go ahead and uh, do this. So I actually did get this error in a few different areas. So what we can do here is we can actually pop this in because I actually didn't, I forgot to do this to be honest with you, because I actually did get that error that it's coming up with. Um, so we're going to go to our next config as well. And where we have the experimental, we're just going to copy this in as well. OK, and now what I want you to do is make sure that you go back to your initial terminal because you just changed the um, the config file. I want you to cut your terminal and I want you to so control C. So go into your terminal, control C, and I want you to npm run dev to restart your terminal. OK, now with that done, we're going to go back to our app. We're going to refresh and we're going to make sure that the app is loading. 
Okay, if we get an error at this point, we know we need to fix it. So take things at this granular speed. Let me know if the speed is pretty good. We also just destroyed 200 likes. So let's keep on going, guys. I want to get those likes up. So keep smashing the like button if you are watching uh, and, you're, and you're enjoying the content. Guys, I'm not joking. It's absolutely ridiculous how crazy you guys are loving the AI content right now. Over a million views just on our AI content in the past month. That's nuts. That's actually nuts, right? And 36 million minutes of watch time. I, I am speechless. I appreciate you guys beyond belief, right? So you can see our app works successfully. That is amazing, okay? So at this point, we're now gonna go ahead and do Command J to hide that. Okay, so first things first, we need to import some of the elements that we require from Tremor, um, the, the Tremor component library. Okay, so I've gone ahead and pulled those in. Great. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull in a card. So I'll show you how we can implement a card. So if we, we simply pop a card in like so, what you will now see is that there is simply a card wrapping this element, right? So you can very subtly see it. Right, so it's a card wrapping it, okay? So at this point, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the text element and I'm simply gonna type in weather AI and you can feel free to name it whatever you want, okay? It's completely up to you. I'm then gonna go ahead and use the subtitle component, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and use the subtitle component and this one will say powered by OpenAI Next.js 13.2 or it's actually 13.3. And uh, yes, yeah, so let's correct that. 13.3, Tailwind CSS, Tremor 2.0 and more. And as you can see, now we get their nice little UI. That's really nice, okay? And then what we can actually do is start, we, the, what's really nice is that these Tremor.so uh, components actually are built with Tailwind CSS in mind. So you can just directly extend. They also have their own colors and so forth. They have colors. They also have, um, and it wasn't the size, it was colors, yeah. I don't know if it's a font size, no. So you can just change it like this. You say text, for example, 6XL. And then you'll get your nice bigger text, okay? So we're just gonna go ahead and style this out a little bit right now. We're gonna say the text should be centrally aligned. Text should be centrally aligned and the margin bottom for this one should be 10. And now we've got a little bit of spacing, bolding it out. That looks very clean, right? For the subtitle, we're gonna go ahead and say that it should have a class name of text extra large and it should be the text centrally aligned. Okay, very simple, very straightforward. And then what I have underneath here is a divider. Now this divider is simply gonna have a margin on the y-axis of 10, okay? So we should see a, a nice little divider now. So everything is fairly straightforward, fairly easy to go ahead and comprehend. Underneath here, we're gonna have another embedded card. And this is where we're essentially gonna have the country live, right? So this card right here. So you can see where we're going towards. Right, so if we go ahead and pop the card in right now, you can see the card is on the screen. And then here we're gonna have the city picker uh, component, right? So we're gonna go ahead and actually create that custom component very shortly. Now, for the class name for the card, I'm gonna have a background, background which is a gradient. And what we gotta do here is we gotta specify the from color and the to color. Okay, so I'll show you. So we say background gradient to the bottom right, okay? And then we say from this color to this color. All right, and you can actually choose whatever color you want. I've just got two very similar shades of blue and it kind of is very subtle. You might not be able to tell, but that's exactly what we've done here, okay? Now, what we're gonna next do is we're gonna go over to uh, the top and we're gonna start styling this out. So that way we've got the surrounding uh, stuff like correctly done. So here I'm gonna go ahead and change this to a div because we're gonna go ahead and update our main. Thank you so much to Din Parahu for the donation. I appreciate you guys. Absolutely crazy with the donations today. It's flying, it's so awesome to see. Um, I appreciate you all. I'm gonna go ahead and um, bring the music a little bit up as well. Right. That's it. I'm gonna. Oh, that's it. I like this kind of stuff. This about. All right. So we got the um, div class name six six. I don't know why I put six six out there. Okay. We're gonna say min height of screen. Okay. And then that's gonna bring it up. And then we're gonna say background gradient. And we're gonna use the same gradient effect that we previously used, okay? So I'm actually gonna go ahead and pop that in like so. So I'm gonna pop it in just like this. So I'm gonna pull that in over here. And what you'll see is that it's now using the maximum height of the screen. So you, we set the minimum height of the screen. And then we're gonna say padding should be 10. Right now it's touching the sides. We do not want that, okay? We wanna have a bit of breathing room. So padding 10 flex flex column and really it's up to you with this with this essence right what we're going to do is flex column because there's one child here and by doing this we can say justify that one child in the center with this little hack and what it will do is it will center that evenly so we don't have to you know worry about how to deal with any of the calculations it just does it nicely okay 
and then you can put a, ma a, a max width constraint if you really want to and so forth if you were going to do that it's very simple you just do max width uh, like 3xl for example and then you can see right here so that's actually done it for the entire children you might not want to do that you would, if you want to do that you would simply do it here you would do like max width 4xl and then you do mx auto to maximum center okay and what this will do now is it will, it will restrict that box so that way it doesn't take up the entire sides in the design you saw it took up the entire size sometimes that can look messy so you might want it like this okay so things are looking pretty decent so far absolutely good and with that said we're going to have a quick little two second water break uh while i read the comments you can see everyone's saying um everyone's hyped up today it's pretty cool don't forget smash that like button we're almost at 300 likes already and it's not even been 29 minutes that's absolutely crazy All right jump back into it we're going to go straight over to the city picker right so let's go ahead and create a city picker component so first thing i want you to do close the app folder click on the package json folder so that you're at that level now i want you to create a folder called components inside of the components folder and it's also worth mentioning that any component made in this folder is also going to be a uh, server component by default so anything in next year's 13 point uh, uh, 13 and above is actually um uh is actually using um server components by default notice that when do you start using gpt patience my friend patience all right uh, so we're gonna say city picker city picker city picker dot tsx boom there we go rfce there we go and yeah just like that now i do want to mention anyone who's just tuned in the area which GPT is actually going to be amazing for is that we are actually, this is literally me providing a huge block of data to this, to the GPT prompt. And it goes ahead and gives me an amazing summary just like this based on all of the weather information. That is actually game changer, incredible, powerful sort of thing to happen, right? So we're going to be doing that in just a second, like shortly. So we've got our CEP picker function, uh, functional component. So we're going to go ahead and pop that in like so and those aliases that we saw earlier is this now what this is doing is you don't have to go ahead and do the traditional you know upper level upper level upper level so forth rubbish now what you can do is you've already automatically set it as an alias and what this does is inside of your typescript config you can set the path now what it says is if you have your at forward slash symbol it automatically goes to the home root directory and that's really handy because then you don't have to go up and up and up level you just go ahead and simply do at component and so forth and at live or at um api and so forth like anything you need to do it just to jump to the top level you just do at right really cool and you can actually add custom ones any of that good stuff so i recommend you really do get used to using that now as you can see our city picker is there so the next step is to naturally build our city picker okay so this city picker right here we're actually going to need something called country state city now i'll show you what this is this is actually an npm package now as you can see here npm js we've got the country state city package you can see it's quite a popular library and what this is really good at is it gives us a list of all of the countries all of the cities and we're going to use that to populate our drop down select menu okay so first things first we need to install this so well, how do i do that we go ahead and npm i country state city so i'm going to go ahead pop this over on the side put command j bring up my terminal pop into my second terminal and then we're going to do npm i country state city now this is in installing that dependency into our project then what i want to do is pull in that dependency just like so so let's go ahead and do that right now boom now we have our country and our city right now we are going to need some client interaction uh, components here like such as state and so forth so we are going to convert this to a client component okay so in this case that way we can have things like state and so forth i'm not going to go too far into that if you are interested in any of those things remember definitely check us out at zero to full stack hero the course and community the link is in the description i teach everything about next.js so if you if you're finding this like way over your head check us out and i promise you it will break everything down inside the community okay um raj Singh, i see you we've got alex stromer oh we got some papa fam members in the house that's what i'm talking about awesome stuff guys we're about to smash 300 likes as well destroy that like button if you're watching the replay we're probably at a million views at some point right now because that's how these videos are growing right so next things for next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to um our we're actually gonna go ahead and install 
the select react select library as well because we're going to need a select field right so in this case the next one we're going to do is the react select library so this is a really handy library and it's very good for things like drop downs now what's good about it is you can simply type into it as well and it handles the type search select sort of functionality that we might need which is something which you're going to need a lot of the time right so we're going to go ahead and install this into our dependency remember yarn if you're using yarn you can use that we're using npm so let's go ahead and do it like so pull this up install it like this and now we have a react select inside of our project and as you can see they've got a nice demo of the the, the sort of type of data that you have to pass it in. So what I always recommend is that you get very good at transforming data. Again, we actually have a lesson about this inside the course, but you can see that this is how the data is expected to come in. So we have to go ahead and just customize our data so that it pulls into that in, in that shape and form. Okay, and that's pretty much as simple as it is. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and head over to our code. And we can start using this stuff. So first thing I want to do is import the select library at the top. So just like so, import the select library. And then I'm going to go ahead and actually define the options that you saw just there. So remember these options right here. I'm actually going to convert all of the cities that we've previously installed from this country state C into that format. So how do I do that? Well, it's very simple. I can say const options equals country right so country dot get all countries okay what this will do is it, it will return all of the different countries so if i click into this you can see i've got i countries and it will get have all of these bits of information inside so name phone code iso code flag everything like that etc we're gonna map every single country into the following shape so parentheses and then brackets and then we're going to open it up now here what i want you to do is remember there's two types of information that we need we need a value and a label okay so the further value is going to include an object and inside of that object we're going to have latitude longitude and iso code okay so these following data then we're going to have the label and for the label i'm just going to use the country name so this is the options in the in the state that we need it okay the next thing i'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and pop in my um, my select field here, right? So we're gonna have the select field that we previously talked about. Then we're gonna have the options, right? And we're gonna simply pass in the options from the above, right? That we went ahead and created. Now, if we go ahead and hit enter now, what I want you to do is I want you, I want you to just test it on your site, okay? So go over to your site. And as you can see how, look at that. We already have all the cities inside. So this is a great point to sort of test your logic, see if it's working and so forth, right? And you can see you can click in and it saves it and so forth, right? So at this point, you now are pulling in all the countries inside of your app, okay? The next step we now we need to do is we now need to monitor the user. So that way, when they go ahead and click into this, right? So when they click into it, we're gonna store that piece of state and then we're gonna show a city. Now, what we're gonna do is on that city selector, we're then gonna have um, all the cities from the determined country that you've selected. So if you select Angola, it's then gonna show the cities corresponding to Angola and so forth, okay? So let's go ahead and do that right now as well. So first thing we're gonna need to do is actually have a piece of state to track the user's input, okay? So the first one we're gonna do is have a selected country piece of state. Okay, so this is gonna be a uh, option, right? So we're actually gonna create a new type called option very shortly. And then we need to actually in import the use state hook. So what is this option, right? So the option is actually gonna be the type that I actually went ahead and defined here. So value, label, and so forth. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how we can do that right now. So we're just gonna pop that in. And this is a TypeScript definition. And what's really good about this is it's actually gonna go ahead and make it um, so that we can type protect the when we're sort of, you know, messing around with things. So that way we can be sure that we're not gonna make a type error in uh, the start without kind of, you know, moving ahead. James Tuttle says, morning all, I cannot wait until the weekend is over to check this out. Oh, I can't wait until the weekend is here. Check this out, uh, Papa Fan. That's what I'm talking about, dude. I see you. That's awesome. And uh, Juan, says, Juan says, is TypeScript better than JavaScript? Yes, in, in a lot of essences. Remember, it's a superset of JavaScript. So you need to have, you need to know JavaScript to use TypeScript, right? It doesn't work without knowing JavaScript. Um, but it's going to protect you in the type checking domain. Next up, we need a selected city, right? So it's going to be the same principle. Uh, in this case, it's going to be a city option, however. So in this, it's going to be a city option. Now, a city option, slightly different values. And I'll showcase this right here. So we've got the type option over there. Then we've got a city option. The value in this case will be latitude, longitude, country code, name, and state code. Then the label will be string. 
okay so not far off it but now we've got our c option and our option so we're pretty much prepared for the next step okay now the final step after that is we're going to have a router now the router is because what we want to do is once you've selected your country then you select your city i want to basically take that information and redirect you to the page where it's like forward slash london forward slash longitude forward slash latitude so i'm actually going to pop, send you to a page where it's your city then it's your coordinates in the url and then that page is actually going to be cacheable and so forth and there's a reason why we chose to do this architecture because of the way that the api works and everything like that but it works pretty nicely and you'll see for yourself now be careful when you import your router do not make this mistake you see if i did it this approach this is importing from next router we do not want to do that we want to import from next navigation since we are using nextjs 13 so don't make that mistake i promise you it will bite you later on so you want to be a little bit cautious about that okay so what i want to do now is inside this select field i'm going to go ahead and map our value so we're going to say value equals con selected country Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say on change, right? And I can simply pass in something like handle selected country. And I need to create this function. And this is going to be a function which is going to be responsible for handling the um, when I've selected it. Okay. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to say const handle selected country. And then the prop would be the selected option. In this case, we can rename it just simply to option. And this will fire off when the user selects a country. Okay, so in this case, handle selected country. Then what I will do here is I will set the selected country to, oops, nope, set, sorry, the selected country to the option. Okay, and I want to set the selected city to no. And the reason why I do that is because if you change the country, you want to actually reset your city selection, okay, in case you kind of went backward afterwards. We're almost close to smashing that 300 like. Remember, smash that like button if you're watching this video. I love and appreciate every single one of you, All right? Everyone's super focused right now. That's, that's what I like to see. So at this point, we are going to check that this still works. You see, there we go. We're still getting our selection value. So nothing yet has broken, okay? Then I'm going to just simply enforce that the text is black as we tend to use this in a few different areas later on. Okay, so that's looking pretty neat so far. Then after that, I'm going to have a label uh, on top of it. We're actually going to have the um, a label like so. So a label and this is for the country and this is going to be country like so. Okay, and then I want to have a globe icon. Now, I do want to use something called hero icons inside of this build, okay? So what I want to do is I need to install that. Now, hero icons are how we get these lovely icons inside of our app. And the icons in question right here are things like this. And they're also something used by the Tremor library. So if you are installing Tremor, what you will find is that we are actually needing to uh, install the hero icons package like so. Okay, now you can install version 1.06. I'm actually just going to install hero icons uh, react like that. And then we can go ahead and continue on. So hero icons react. Okay, and just like that, I just want to double check the versioning that I have on mine so you guys can get the same versioning. So because I understand that sometimes things get updated. So hero icons 2.0.17. That is correct. Okay, so that's the value I'm using right now. So now we can start using our, the required um, icons inside of our build. So what I want to do here is I'm going to import it into my uh, file. So I need the globe icon inside of my file. So I'm going to go here, simply pop in the globe icon like so. Now here you can see we actually need to install the type definitions for this. So as you can see here, sometimes you need to go ahead and import, uh, install them separately. So let's go ahead and run that command. Types hero icons react, and then it should install the um, type definitions for us. I believe we might be able to do it this way. Let's see if it does it. Right, so sometimes I get this a bit of an annoying issue. I'm actually going to showcase how I did it in just a second. Let's go to our package JSON and it should have actually pulled those in. To be honest with you, what I think happened here was if I go back to my package JSON. Yeah, so what's happened here is hero icons has been installed, but the actual default hero icons has not been installed. So what I want to do is I actually want to install just the basic hero icons as well. 
okay so in this case i'm going to say npm i hero icons okay let's added the package let's go back to our file and see if we have our type definitions yet we should do to be honest with you let's go back yep so now okay uh, that's a bit annoying we don't have it yet let's go ahead and debug it let's see so i've got my hero icons 207 and i have my hero icons react now okay so the reason why is because i actually did opt in to use the one that they've recommended so what we're going to do here is i'm going to delete this dependency and i am instead going to replace it with the one that they're recommending just for this demo so that way we can kind of progress on i don't want to spend too long on this so we're going to install this version of the hero icons package okay so we're simply going to go ahead and use their recommendation there and what you will see is if we go ahead and uh, oh, we're gonna actually don't save that one go back into the file now we should have our hero icons 1.06 and then our hero icons here of 2.017 yeah there, and there we go let's got rid of it okay so for the demos purposes that is completely fine uh you can feel free to debug it kind of get past that bit uh, fine afterwards right so now back to our build i don't want to spend too long on things like that because we have a lot of cool things to do right so in this case i'm going to import the globe icon into my files so we already did that at the top and then i will pull it in like so and i simply style it up accordingly okay now i'm going to go ahead and style the div like so we're going to say class name flex items should be center uh, centrally on space x of two and then the text should be white with an opacity of 80 percent bam just like that it goes in right so it looks clean and then here I'm going to say space y of four for every child component that I have here. So in this case, you see how they spaced out a little bit. Okay. So that's looking pretty good already. I already like the look of this. And what I want to do next is I actually made a little mistake here. So I actually want to wrap the entire selection of things that I have here. So everything up to div here. And then I want to go ahead and do space y of two. I thought it looked bigger. There we go. Nice. Okay. And then what I want you to do is I actually want you to go ahead and very simply copy this. So copy this, pop it in like so. Okay. And now you have two, you have country and country. Now the second one, I want you to change it to city, but here I'm going to add a conditional. And what I'm actually going to say is I'm going to say selected country and, and then I've got my parentheses. And what this is saying, conditionally render this only if you have a selected country. So everything that we just copied, I simply want to take it, paste it inside of there okay now if i refresh this page you'll see that i don't have the city but the minute i pick something boom it shows a city now the city we need to go ahead and change it to the value is going to be the selected city and then the on change will be handle selected city instead okay now handle selected city very similar push let's go ahead and create a different file up here we're gonna say const handle selected city equals and this is going to be option but this time we're going to use the city option type definition okay and then we're actually going to say set selected city to the option that we pass in and afterwards remember i said we're actually going to redirect the user so what i want to do is i want to prepare us for that so i'm going to say router.push forward slash location okay i'm actually going to do back ticks here so i can have some string interpolation forward slash location and then i'm going to go ahead and actually push through the name forward slash latitude forward slash longitude okay so location and then i'm going to go into it and i'm going to say option dot value dot latitude okay forward slash option dot value dot longitude right and then that one we close up now as you can see they've automatically added this optional chaining in the event that option isn't working okay so um live debugging mood for sunny is like this and i saw so some baha what is up he goes what is the weather in prague now we can actually check that in a second i will definitely go ahead and share i've actually stopped running the app but i will check it once i get the app running good to see you here dude so in this case we've got this running now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to comment this out just for now while we're testing it because i don't want it to redirect me otherwise it will say a 404 redirect okay now here for the options we actually have the city now as you can see i've actually just punched it in over here um no so you can't see sorry i need to show, showcase that so we're actually going to create a city options now as well so for the city options i'm actually just going to do it in line to showcase what we can do here but for the options i'm going to go ahead and say city right so imagine let's just separate that we're going to say city dot get cities of country and then here i'm going to pass in the iso code 
Okay, so this is actually getting the selected country value dot ISO code. Now ISO code is like the sort of you know representation of that country by a special code. And then what we'll do is we conditionally chain off of it to say map, and then we get um, all the values back from it. All right. So at that point we will get the city, so cities, and then we can go ahead and do the following. So I'm actually going to just call this one state for now. I'm going to do a parentheses and return an object. And inside of that object, I've got a value and a label just like we previously did before. So latitude, longitude, country code, name, state code, and label. And if you really want to make things a bit easier, you can feel free to rename state to something like city. But in this case, you can see we're just mapping it in line. I'm just showing you how you can do it in line. You can feel free to refactor this, have it in a user fact, that kind of thing. You know, as you wish, it's completely your call. Okay, so now we have handle select to see we've valued it. Um, there we go. And then we've got our options. So at this point, we should be pretty good. So let's try it out, guys. We're going to go over to somewhere like the Dubai. So in this case, we're going to say United Arab Emirates. And I should only see cities now for, yes, the UAE. This is perfect. Let's go to uh, United Kingdom. And now here we should see things like, you know, London. So if I type in, there we go. So that we only get the cities in London. That's perfect. If we go to somewhere completely else, like, you know, we could say, oh, uh, let's go to Portugal, for example. Portugal cities load up, right? Amazing stuff, right? So you can see now it's working in a way that we wish. So why the final step is I can simply go ahead and uncomment this router.push. And then let's see if it redirects us. So pay attention to this, the URL at the top. Let's go ahead and go to, for example, Dubai. So United Arab, Arab Emirates, Dubai. And then now what you'll see is we should get redirected to that location. And as you can see on the screen, what we are seeing is you should be seeing something like this. HTTP localhost 3000 forward slash location forward slash a uh, latitude and then longitude. Okay. So we need to create a dynamic endpoint, which will support this. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so that section is done. We also just destroyed 300 likes. That's what I'm talking about, guys. Keep on going. The energy is absolutely wild. That's crazy, right? So at this point, we have our home screen done so we can navigate to our first city. So this is where the real fun comes in, right? This is where we're actually going to start building our backend infrastructure, our GraphQL API, all of this good stuff. And then this is going to go ahead and get things in. Wow. Chris Rizna says, huge inspiration, Sonny. Thanks for all the work you do help me land a job last september as a software engineer jay's already screenshotted it because he knows me too well that is awesome chris thank you for sharing that absolutely incredible stuff that's what i'm talking about papa fam we're getting people's jobs that's it and that's what the energy is about quick little water break before we dive right in okay so doing absolutely amazing right now guys Faster says, so up. <laughs> so up. All right. I'm going to change the music a little bit as well. I like to have a little bit of a mishmash. There we go. Okay. Let's just do something different. Okay. Let's do this one. All right. So next thing we want to do now is we want to go ahead and build out that second screen. Okay. So I want to have some kind of screen that supports it so we don't get a 404. Okay, so how do we do that? So if you're not sure on how to do dynamic routes, especially at that level, I will make it so easy for you that you will honestly be like, wow, that's so easy. Okay, so we're going to have a forward slash location because that's how we do the, the naming structure here. So for the route inside the app folder, we have a forward slash location. This will be resembled by forward slash location on our website. Inside of there, what we do is we have square brackets to determine to basically specify that there is a dynamic value that will be supported so in this case we're going to say the first one is city then clicking on city we're going to create a new folder and inside of there we're going to say a latitude right so a lat and then inside of there we're going to say long okay and the reason why i've done this one this structure is because i'm going to be caching based on city lat and long okay so this is really really clean so Garsdale says, what did you use to create that markup? I actually coded this. This is code. This is just a screenshot. But I did actually do this with, um, um, I did actually do it in, um, I got the design from Dribble, which was awesome. Uh, Join the pub fam two weeks ago. That's what I'm talking about, man. Good to see you. I hear you, man. All right. So at this point, we are going to, uh, inside of that long, we're going to go ahead and uh, add a new file, page.tsx. 
planning to combine the web script project with this one this weekend jay screenshot that that is an awesome uh, use case for uh, our friends over at bright data so we're going to go ahead and add that in page.tsx and this will create a page at that point rfce <laughs> stream says you just don't get old he goes i've watched you tears ago uh, before a few days you're just looking at the same age thank you dude i appreciate that <laughs> right so at this point this is going to be we're going to call this one um let's uh, what, what did i name this one we're just gonna call this one the you can really name this one whatever you want it don't really matter here we're just gonna call this the weather page right so weather page get rid of this and then you can say welcome to the weather page right so now we should have a page at that route and there's time to test it so provided you did it all correctly let's go to somewhere like albania let's go to bausch and then you can see four four hundred so let's just double check location and then we have everything correctly set up let's let's have another look at what we have here so let's just confirm that it's in the correct folder so it is in the long folder what we may need to do is hit save one more time go back refresh okay so we don't have support yet in the correct place so city lat long let's have a look we've got page.tsx export default okay that's all good that's looking fine and we are returning our div that's completely fine as well let's complete let's cut our server off on the first one we're going to cut our server and we're going to npm run dev one more time city is not in the url oh thank you guys that's what i'm talking about ah there you go look at that that's what i love debugging on live stream All right that's so cool right that's what i'm talking about so that's the power of pair programming right so that's where i've forgotten it so thank you so much for pointing that out guys here we have our issue we don't have the city so option that's how you know what that's actually incredible that you guys are watching to that degree so so nice All right so we have our city picker here and i believe it is just like that yep so option.value.name now we are doing it correctly okay that's it. that's phenomenal when i think about that and i think that you're actually watching it to that degree that shows me how committed the papa fam is i find that incredible All right so we're gonna hit save here now let's go ahead and restart our app i think it's rebuilding yep there it is it's rebuilding so we should see our home page in just a short second I was just testing you guys exactly <laughs> jay's got his spot on All right so at this point we're going to go to albania we're going to do uh we can do anywhere really and and now what we should see is welcome to the weather page let's go that's what i'm talking about and remember that's so if you get to that point don't stress just do what i did there and uh, speak to your community <laughs> uh, no no just go ahead and debug it right see there is always a reason why something's not working now how do i get access to that city that longitude that latitude right so because i'm going to need that later on so how do i get access to those things well actually we get the props come through here so the props actually contain a few pieces of information right so really what we're going to do is define our props and i'll showcase it to you so the props come through in the following shape and you can check for yourself but it includes the params as part of the arguments right so in this case we've got city lat and long which come inside of it so what we can actually do here is an es6 destructuring technique where we can break open our uh, object and we can get the params out and then we can break open that and we can get the city the lat and the long okay and then welcome to the weather page and then what i can do here is i can simply just pop out city i can say lat long and just to showcase to you that it actually shows that then we can see here welcome to bernard with the lat and long right so perfect stuff okay so at this point now what we want to do is we are going to actually get the back end set up right so we have our city we have our latitude and our longitude okay so what we're now going to do is we're going to use the free weather api provided by open material but we're actually going to do it in a way where we basically are going to set this up on a back end sub, uh, supported by StepZen. Now, StepZen is going to do a really cool job here because what we're going to do is we're going to use the free weather API to basically define our optimal curl request. So, for example, I've clicked in a curl request here. So, you can actually go onto the website, openmeteo.com, and then you can click on this right here to sort of demo it out. Now, you don't need a key, which is awesome. It's a completely open API. And as you can see, we have a ton of information that comes back. Now, remember what I said, we have loads of information. So, 
You know that summary that I showed you earlier? So remember the summary that I showed you from ChatGPT? So in pre uh, precisely this one, you will not believe it, but really, I'm not joking when I say this, all I did was pass in this information, I cleaned it up, I passed it in, and then it defined this. So from that information, GPT-4 is going to give us all of that nice, beautiful summary just like this. So that is absolutely incredible. Right, uh, Albi says you make me a little famous. Thanks, bro. Oh, amazing stuff, <laughs> and I love that. Right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this curl request and we're basically gonna just go ahead and give the hard work to um, StepZen. StepZen is gonna do all of the hard work for us. Okay, so first thing I want you to do is in the the first link in the description is a sign up link to StepZen. I want you to click it. StepZen will then open up this page right here. Right, so you'll see start for free, create an account. Now I've already created an account, so I'm just gonna simply go to my dashboard. So I can head over to my dashboard. Once you've created your account and you're inside your dashboard, you can simply go ahead and you'll see you've got a bunch of different endpoints and you have your nice sidebar. Now this is really cool. You can go ahead and explore this for yourself, but you can see we can get, they give you tons of different endpoints. It's really, really awesome to go ahead and use, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, set steps then up inside of our project so i'll show you how to get started so we have an uh, documents over here and then what we can do is you can simply use this to read and check out i'm going to click install and set up install steps then so in this case i've already installed it globally but you want to run this command right so steps then now what we want to do is head over to our code and i want you to do the following I want you to go into package json level so at this level i want you to create a folder called step zen and then inside of your terminal, I need you to do the following. I need you to go ahead and simply open up a second terminal and CD into that. So CD into steps in. Now be very careful because now we're inside of this directory. Okay. And there's a reason why we do this because when we're initializing it, we want to essentially create two separate areas, right? So one for the steps end back end, and then we've got an XJS app, right? I didn't say front end back end because some people might get confused, but the back end is essentially our steps end folder. Then what you want to do is step Zen login. Now, before I do that, I'll show you how easy it is because what they've done here for you is you can simply go ahead and follow the documentation. So once you're on StepZen's website, head over to the StepZen docs at this link right here at the top. Then I want you to go ahead and click install and set up and read down here. Now, the reason why I say this is because they give you the commands and they even give you your keys and you, everything to get logged in. So you wanna go ahead, type in StepZen login into your, uh, into your um, terminal. I've already done this, so I'm not gonna repeat that. Then it will say, what's your account name? You simply pop in your values. You simply pop in your admin keys and so forth. And it will give you your key here as well. And you can also get your key um, from the steps and dashboard. And then, yeah, you can log into your account. Okay. Now, once that is done, we're going to go ahead and do a quick start with steps on uh, steps and import CLI. So I've already logged in. So now what we can do is you see where it says steps and import curl and so forth steps and import MySQL. We're actually going to do a curl authentication request. Okay. So I'm going to show you how we're going to do this. So I've actually got an ideal perfect uh, string here and I'll show you how I've defined it. So um, what I want to do is head over to the free weather API. We're going to click on features. We're going to click on API and documentation. And as you can see here, you can actually select all the things that you want, additional variables like the UV index and so forth, the weather code, and even things like daily information. So current weather with temperature settings, wind speed and so forth, with the time zone, all that good stuff. And then it will give you a pre-built URL. Okay. So in this case, if I was to select a city, for example, London, Okay, and then click it and say time zone is required. You have to give it a time zone. So I believe we could do something like Europe, London. And then you can do uh, again, let's just do London like here. And now what you'll find is if you go down here, ignore this craziness, it will give you a perfectly formatted API URL. Now, if I was to call this URL, for example, if I click it here, what you'll find is it gives me all the weather information I've requested. Okay, so I've saved you a little bit of hassle here because what I've done is I've actually created a URL that you can use for yourself. Now, I'm going to go ahead and keep this very simple. I'm going to put this on the screen. I've also gone ahead and actually included it in the Papa GitHub repo inside of a test file. 
Okay, so if you don't want to do the longness of this, I'm just going to showcase it on the screen right now by saying test curl.txt. I'm going to paste it in like so. So this is the text. This is essentially the curl request that I'm going to run. Okay, so all you can do is two options at this point. You can stop the video um, and you can go ahead and copy this or you can simply get the public GitHub repo and do that uh, and basically find it in the test curl.txt uh, file that I've submitted onto the GitHub repo, right? So this right here, uh, or you could build it yourself based on these parameters, right? So we're going to copy this curl request. So if you click it, you can see it gives me a bunch of information and this is a great way to start things off, okay? So... Next up, what I want to do is I want to go over to my terminal. So we're going to go simply back, save that file. I'm going to close it. And now I'm going to do step zen init. All right, so this is the first step. I'm going to do step zen init. This will initialize a step zen directory inside of here. What would you like your endpoint to be called? Melting camel is completely fine. And then you can see it's created a step zen uh, config.json for us, right? So very simple. To be honest, you can actually just skip that step and do the next bit. J says in it. <laughs> so here we can say step zen, import, curl. And then what I want you to do, guys, is literally paste in your curl request. Now, what's amazing about step zen is that from this information, a few things are going to happen, right? So I just want to showcase to you, if you are stuck and you have no idea where to go, you can actually get all of this information that I'm talking about right now over here. So even if you have authentication headers, you can bypass them by passing in your authentication with the dash dash header argument, okay? Now, you can go ahead and import. And what's really amazing about this, guys, what it will do once I hit enter is it will basically read the response, create a perfect schema, which will represent that information. And then it will create a GraphQL API that will literally allow me to select and deselect the information that I want from this request. Now that is damn powerful. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to hit enter. Bam. And what we'll see is it will go ahead and it will import a schema into step zen. So let's go ahead and go to our step zen. And as you can see, I've got the curl. I've got index.graphql. Okay. Now, as you can see, look at this, guys. Absolutely phenomenal. It's found and it's determined all of the different data types. Now, don't get confused. This is GraphQL, not TypeScript, but you can use this to then go ahead and create type definitions. Yes. But this has literally gone ahead and done all of the hard work for us. So you see that entire crazy object that I just showed you previously. So this one right here, it's gone ahead and created type definitions from all of that. Right. So no joke, current weather, current weather is day. You can see everything is literally being converted over to a type definition or a schema. And then it's given us a query to go ahead and showcase from. Right. So and you can see the endpoint is here and then you can pass in the following parameters. Right. So this is absolutely amazing. Right. So we're going to go ahead and type in step Zen start. And what this will do is it will deploy our UR, our step Zen um, uh, API as well as set up a local host um, instance for us. So this will get set up at localhost 5001 melting camel for us. And for you, it'll be a little bit different. But now if I go to the Explorer, you can see I've got my query and I can go ahead and simply select the pieces of information that I want. But you would have to go ahead and pop in the current weather, daily, hourly, longitude, latitude, and time zone. And then you can basically go ahead and select what items you want back. So I will show you how to do this. But right now, if I was to do this, you'll see it needs these pieces of information to go ahead and do that. But I've actually done that for us. So I'll go ahead and show you how we can do it next. So that's step zen already set up. So in a nutshell, so easy. So, so easy to get a GraphQL endpoint. If you've ever done GraphQL work, <coughs> you'll know that's painful to do by yourself. StepZem just made that like easy, mate. Right? So absolutely easy stuff. So quick little water break. Smash the like button if you found something pretty useful there. And then we're going to go ahead and show you how you can actually consume that from the Next.js app. The, the pace is doing awesome right now. Uh, I'm really loving the energy that we have in the chat as well and yes absolutely um, awesome stuff so all right so what we're going to do now is we're going to go over to our application we already have our step zen api and it's worth mentioning as well in the step zen um dashboard you will see your new endpoint being deployed okay so that new endpoint that we just went ahead and deployed was called something camel melting camel so you can actually go ahead and play with it and interact with it here as well so it's something which i really like about step zen because 
imagine you're away from your computer you still need access to your api you still need to know what the hell's going on or you want to play with something just see if you can fetch some data you want to pre-fire your queries all that good stuff you can actually access it completely from the steps and dashboard and you see how easy that was to implement okay so it's really really awesome in my eyes okay so at this point now i want you to do the following so we are going to create our type definitions from this because we're actually going to use this in the front end as well right so what i've done here is i like to grab this pull it to the right okay and then command b and then what i want you to do is close everything and at the top level at the package json level i want you to create a new file and i'm going to call this the typings dot d dot ts so these are all of your type definition files and the reason why i've got it left and right like this now is because i'm basically going to go ahead and map things over right so you can see right here we've got the temperature wind speed and so forth for this one i'm going to go ahead and create an interface to map that right so you can see there we've basically essentially mapped it over for the daily units i'm going to do the same thing okay so for daily units i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to have essentially mapped it over so you can see where we had typically a float before now i've got a string value okay now um you can go ahead and really play around with this as much as you want i believe that this is could be an array actually but in this case for now it's completely no sorry this is a string this is a string yeah this is the daily units so this is actually this value right here so i've actually gone ahead and skipped one so in this case the daily would be the following so for the daily units we're actually going to have so this is going to be the daily representation then we go down we've got our daily units and you see typescript is slightly different definitions but it's, it's not too hard to follow out and you guys can feel free to type these out yourself or again the access is in the github repo now for the hourly we've got this so this is essentially the one-to-one -one representation of hourly then we've got hourly units and we've got the root which essentially connects all of these together so we've got hourly units let's go ahead and pop that in as well and then we've got the root so let's go ahead and pull that in as well okay nice All right so that's the root yeah and you can see the root is actually connecting to our other interfaces at the top so that's essentially gone ahead and created one-to-one -one type definition mappings now why is that important because now when we pull the information in on the front end using the apollo client which we'll do in just a second we're actually going to have an easy time of basically going ahead and safely accessing that information with our typescript definitions otherwise imagine trying to access all of that it will be like was it dot current weather and all this kind of stuff it gets pretty nasty whereas when we got our type definitions down it's actually pretty easy to go ahead and use it to the point where i was able to do it without constantly looking back right so it's actually very very powerful doing that so we can now close our graphql and now we need to set up our consumer so what we've essentially got our back end up and running now what we need to do is essentially create a apollo client on the front end so apollo client this is what we're going to be using inside of our app so I want you to go over to Apollo and you can feel free to read it out yourself. You want to click on get started and you can install the dependencies inside of your project. So we're going to go ahead and install the Apollo client inside of our app. So command J and I want you to go into, you see right now we have the first running on XJS app, the second running on steps and at the, the steps and route. We're going to create another one and you can, you have to make sure you're in the correct directory. So this is in the correct directory. Do LS to just to make sure. So you want to be at the top level. Then we want to do NPM install Apollo client. Okay. Uh, Baron says, you crazy, you make it look and sound easy. Honestly, dude, I appreciate it. I appreciate the, the kind words, but yeah, it's all just practice time and patience, right? Kushal says, does not interface current wave include is day property. Um, I just want to actually check that. So we have the current weather yes you're correct i don't know why that came out actually so typings typings d.ts and i actually current weather was is day so actually okay good shout let's do let's go ahead and grab this what we can do here is the temperature integer so this one yes you're correct actually that actually has a number in it good spot weather code yes that's that's a very good spot so make it ocd perfect there you go good stuff right so i missed a little type definition there so that that's insane people are that clear oh, that's awesome man i am actually so happy that people are watching to that degree thank you All right so at this point we installed the apollo client uh south africa now so what is up and now what i want to do is i want to go ahead and create so close everything up go to the top package json and i'm going to create a new file called apollo 
client. Apollo client allows us to essentially create a connection to our uh, backend, right? So the, the, the backend that we just deployed with GraphQL. So here I wanna go ahead and do two things. I wanna import the things I need. So very straightforward. I'm then gonna go ahead and um, create a type definition for the client. So the client is gonna be an Apollo client or it can be a no value. And at the beginning, we're just gonna initialize it with nothing. And this is for a server pattern. So don't worry, I'll explain that afterwards, but we're gonna say export const get client. And this is a singleton pattern because basically we're gonna use this to go ahead and get an instant of the client when we're using our app. So whenever I wanna go ahead and interface with the GraphQL API, we can go ahead and do it that way. So I'm gonna say const client equals and you could have done that if client check if you really wanted to. We're gonna say new Apollo client. And then I need to go ahead and pass in a URI. So in this case, it's given me a URI, that's not correct. What we wanna do here is basically, you can set up your environment variables, but I will keep it very straightforward and easy for you for now. So for now, we're just gonna set it up for this one, but you can do a, a check to make sure that if you're in development, you'll have this one, otherwise you'll have your production one. But for now, I'm simply gonna go ahead and put this in. In fact, no, I'm not. I'm going to do it properly. Right, I'm going to go into my folders. I'm going to do .env, .local to set up an environment file. And here I'm going to say API underscore URL. And I'm going to pop that in there. Okay. Now, that means that we've got our URL defined in this variable. Heading back over here, we're going to say process .env .api URL. And that way, when we deploy it, we will actually have things correctly set up, which is much better at uh, doing it, right? Then we say cache new in memory cache. And then we say headers. This bit, I want you to pay extra, extra, extra careful attention to. Um, we're going to go ahead and pop in an authorization key. Okay. So I'm going to pop in an authorization key like so. Okay. And then just like so. And uh, where have I messed something up? So there we go. Yep. Now, as you can see, we need to create a next public steps and API key, right? Now, I'm not actually sure if this needs to be next uh, public, but we'll check it out. So next public uh, steps and API key. So where do I get my key from? I will show you. So let's go over to my steps and dashboard. So we're going to go over to the steps and dashboard. And then what I want to do is I'm going to hide my screen for a second after I click this, but you want to click on the account tab. So I'm clicking on the account tab and then what I have here is an API key. So on the account tab, you'll see the following. Okay. So I'm going to showcase some of it, but you'll see an account, you'll see admin key and you'll see API key. So I want you to copy this value. Okay. Copy this value and then paste it inside of the value here. So copy it and paste it inside this value. Okay. Let's go ahead and do that right now. So I've gone ahead, I've copied it and I've pasted it into that value. Okay, then what I've done is I've closed my environment file, right? So now I've saved it and we have access to it there, okay? And then I'm just simply gonna go away from that page that way I don't leak my plan by accident, okay? Cool. So at this point, I have my steps and key all set up as well. So this means every time we send a request, it's gonna go ahead and include the authorization headers inside and it's gotta be appended by a API key to begin with. All right, or prepended. All right, so once that's done, we're gonna return the client. Cool, yeah. And then this uh, function right here, we can export it, that's perfect, okay? So at this point now, we're not actually using this client, so we can get rid of that, my bad. All right, so we can actually go ahead and get rid of that, it's easy, okay? And if you do wanna do it, you can actually say client and then say if client and just directly assign the client like this. You could do this and then say if there is no client and so forth. I'm just going to keep it relatively simple now and create a new one each time. But yes, for optimization purposes, you could do that. Okay. So let's go ahead and get rid of this for now. Cool. So at this point now, we have um, somebody said, how are you making the GraphQL backend? We've already done that with Steps then. So the backend is actually already created here, which was super fast and easy. It was that easy to do it. So this is actually a GraphQL backend and Steps then is handling the entire procedure for us to get up and running which is why it's so powerful it's unreal all right so now what do we need to do well now what we want to do is essentially create a query from our front end to the back end okay so we're going to call this one the fetch weather query okay so how do i do this well i'm going to create a folder called graphql and then inside of my folder i'm going to have queries 
Okay, so queries. Now here, I'm going to have a folder called a file called fetch weather. Oops, feather fetch weather queries. Dot tsx. Okay, dot ts. Sorry, this is not rf. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, cool. Now at this point, we're going to have um, basically our query that we're going to make to GraphQL. Now, how can I make this easier for you? So what I want you to do is remember we had this link to click into Step Zen. I want you to click it. Okay. Now, if you go over to the export button, you can see we actually have a really nice kind of setup here. So what you could do is you could go through, click every single one, and then you'll get a nice kind of query over here. Now, that's what exactly what I did. I went ahead and clicked through each single one. So you can actually go ahead and do this. And you see how it's building this out, right? So you can feel free to do that in the same way. Um, and then it will go ahead and build out the perfect query to get you everything. Obviously, you don't have to do this if you don't want to overfetch. Um, but in this case, I just want to showcase something to you, right? So once you've done all of that, get all of this information included. All right, so you can go ahead and select them all. I'm not sure if there's a quicker way of doing that. If you can select them all, can you do that? No, nope. no, you can't. Okay, that's fine. We're going to do the same thing. You can use chat GPT 3.5. Don't worry if you haven't got access to GPT 4 yet. I see a question already in the chat. Don't worry about it. You can do that. I'm just going to click all of these just to make your life a bit easier. Okay, cool. So at this point, you can see we've got our conditions there and then we've got everything else here. So I want you to just copy this, right? So copy that entire thing. In fact, copy it up until it says const get query, right? So copy that entire thing. Right, so I've actually already done this and what I will do is I will showcase it to you with a few minor differences. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and um, pull that in at the top right now. So just like so. So where's my code? Here we are. I'm going to hide everything and then paste it in. So at this point, you've got GQL. So I need you to install a few dependencies at the top and I'll show you what I modified here. Okay. So we, I've changed the name here to fetch weather query. And then you can see where we have GQL, right? And if this isn't being highlighted for you, you just need the GraphQL extension. Very simple, just install it. But you've got the query. So everything else was pretty straightforward. Everything else was the exact same as yours. The only different thing now would be the parameters that you pass in here, okay? So current weather, we're just gonna say string. And then well, we're gonna give the following values here. So latitude, longitude, and time zone, we simply say string with a uh, exclamation mark. Now, for the daily and hourly, you can feel free to get this code from the Papagia repo or just pause the video and copy it yourself. But these are all the different values I am attempting to get from the daily readings, from the hourly readings, and you can feel free to use that as you wish, okay? Matthias says, bro, I like it. I review this live after work. Thank you. Thank you for being awesome, dude. I appreciate you. Almost at 400 likes. Let's get this video to a 500 likes at least, guys. Then we're going to go to a thousand. We're just going to keep growing, all right? So absolutely incredible stuff. So we're going to go ahead and export this now. So we're going to go all the way down. And we're going to say export default fetch weather query. Okay. So just like that, I have a query now. Okay. So let's test this out. How can I actually go ahead and make a call to my query? And you're probably wondering, this is where it gets really hard now. How is he going to do that? Well, it's actually, this is where it gets pretty easy, right? So in fact, we've actually done all the hard work because Step Zen made it so easy for us that now we actually don't need to do much work, right? And I'll show you exactly what I mean. So what we can do is the first step, now, what I love about Next.js 13 is that we have server components by default. This means at the functional component highest level, you can do async await. That's game changer. That is absolutely game changer stuff. So this makes things like, you know, fetching from our Next.js uh, GraphQL backend using Step Zen super easy, right? You can do fetches, all of that stuff at the highest level. So let's go ahead and pull in the information. So first things first, I need to actually go ahead and pull in the get client. Right. So by default, this hasn't this does not say use client, which means this is a server side rendered component because that's the default behavior. Then what I want you to do is I want to say const client equals get client. OK, as simple as that. And then what we need to do is we are going to go ahead and say const and we're going to say data. We're going to extract the data like destructure it like so. And we're going to go ahead and say await. Now, you can see we don't have an asynchronous, so we need to make this asynchronous. We're going to say await client.query 
Okay, and then we've got an object that we passed in here. Now, the first thing we're going to do is say query, and we're going to say fetch weather query. So remember that query that we went ahead and created earlier, this one right here? We're actually pulling that through here. Okay, then we need to pass in the variables, right? So the variables in question here are actually like so. We're going to say the current weather. Right, so what I'm going to do just to make this extremely clear is I'm going to pop this on the side so you can actually see what I'm doing. All right, so remember these these different values. So the current weather. So the current weather is actually going to be true. Okay, so what I'm doing here is that this is essentially mapping here. So what I'll do is I'll write it out and then I'll draw this out. Right, so we're going to do current weather and then we're going to say longitude. So in this case, it will be a longitude equals long and then we'll say latitude equals lat and we'll say time zone in this case i'm just going to hard code it to gmt okay but really what's happening here is we've got a nice little connection going on because we've got the current weather being mapped over here we're passing it through the longitude is being passed here the latitude is being passed here um, we've got the time zone being passed here and then the daily and the hourly have got default values based on these right because I only I always want these to be set values so you see how we're doing this right so that in that way we're going ahead and we're passing it through now what I want you to do to test that this is working I want you to firstly go ahead and say const results and we're going to map this to root remember that that interface we created earlier on so if we click into it remember the current weather all that kind of stuff the type definitions we're going to map it to root and then we're going to say equals data dot my query now you're probably wondering why is he done my query because remember when we actually had our query inside of um step zen in our uh schema the data is returned under my query so inside of the response it'll be under my query okay and then what i want you to do is console log those results and what we should see is a beautiful thing so now if i go over to my website so it's got over to create uh uh, weather app and then we're going to simply go ahead and remember this is being rendered on the server so you won't be able to inspect it because it's server-side rendered so now what we do is we pull open our terminal we go to our next js app we uh, clear it all and then we refresh and just like that guys look at that we have all the information coming through so here we have the longitude and latitude of this address so 19.8125 so uh in this case 19.8 uh, I think that's fine here. So 40.8125. So it's done the closest that it can to it, which is perfect. Time zone GMT. Perfect. Okay. That's absolutely amazing. And then we've got the temperature, the weather code, the wind speed, the direction, all that good stuff. That's what I want to see. Right. And then we've got the hourly temperatures and everything. So this is perfect. Right. Amazing, amazing stuff. So now what we can do is we can actually go ahead and um, start passing that information and then eventually what we'll do is we'll clean up some of that data pass it to gpt4 gpt4 will create a summary of that data by using the chat completion api and then it will pass it back to us so i guess the next step then naturally to do is build the beautiful ui that you see right here using the data that we have got back so let's do exactly that Okay, so command J to hide this. Motomot says, hey, Sunny, thanks for inspiring someone giving us these amazing tutorials. Are there going to be man projects in the future and can we use Express and XJS? Firstly, there's no need to use Express and XJS because you already have API endpoints in the new route.ts file structure. You also had it in the old pages for slash API structure. So you don't need Express anymore. Uh, and secondly, man projects in the future, perhaps. Who knows? Uh, in fact, um, XJS is my stack now, so I just find no reason to go back. Um, so yeah let's carry on guys so we have the div now what we're going to do is this left hand section we're going to call it the information panel All right so this is going to be a information panel so what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to say information panel and i'm just going to assume that this is a component that we're going to build so i'm going to kind of comment it out just to draft things up we already know that we get the weather page here so i'm going to so and then move that out of the way and then what I will do is I will start building things out as I wish, right? So what I'm going to do is probably leave out this left-hand side and showcase this first. And then we can build out the left-hand side and introduce our functionality as required. So first things first, open up a div, another div inside. And here we're going to have a H2. So actually here I'm going to have another div. I'm going to have a H2 saying today's, today's overview. Okay. 
and then we're gonna have a p tag and you can feel free to customize this with you know terminal components if you really wanted to and so forth we're gonna say last updated at and then remember we actually have access to that data now which is returned so i can actually go ahead and do really cool things here i'm gonna go ahead and change the music up a little bit this is a bit too hectic for me while i'm focusing there we go that's a bit more calm i think right so at this point we've got the um last updated app and then i'm going to say and we're going to pass the date that came back so we say new date and i'm going to say results dot and this is what i love about typescript right so we say current weather dot time thank you jay current weather time we'll say to locale string okay and then here i'm going to have in brackets we'll say again results dot time zone okay and now what you can see is it says last updated at so the data that we fetched was last updated at this time zone right so it was last updated 1970 is not correct which means that we have made a mistake that means that no date was provided back for this um for this uh location so that's actually the beginning of the unix timestamp so current weather was not successfully returned then which is fine we can probably change that afterwards. So we will have a look at that afterwards and modify that. But for now, I will leave it there and we'll fix it afterwards. Okay. So um, that's fine for now. And then I'm going to start styling out. So this P tab, this div is going to have a padding bottom of five. This div is going to have a padding of five. And then the H2 is going to have a text extra large font bold okay the p tag is gonna have a text small text gray of 400 boom and we should start seeing things change up there we go that looks a lot better already cool and then what i like to do is i click on this one to know where i'm at okay and where we had the padding uh five this one i want you to click in so we want to stay in that level okay so here i'm going to say a div and here I'm going to have something called a callout card. Okay. Now the callout card here is going to be the GPT summary. So this is going to be referred to as a callout card. This is also going to be a callout card. Okay. Now, because um, the Tremor 2.0 has not yet introduced uh, direct support for Next.js 13, that we have to go ahead and create a wrapper component for it. So, which is not, which is completely fine. So inside of components, I'm going to create something called a callout card component.tsx rfce to create our callout card component and then we can go ahead and do the following now this callout card will accept two props it's going to have a message prop so we're destructuring and a warning prop we need to define these type definitions like so so i'm going to go ahead and say type props equals and we're going to have our message and then we're going to have a warning which is a boolean now the warning is optional it doesn't have to be included okay but what we need to do is as i mentioned this is a wrapper so it allows us to have the use client directive Okay, so that's basically going to allow it basically say that you have to essentially render on the clients of the browser. Okay, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in two different icons. Right now, what I'm going to do here is instead of pulling out this, I'm going to instead render a callout card. So I'm going to render a callout card. So this one's just going to be called callout. It's just a self-closing component. And then the title here is going to be the message that we pass in the title um the icon is basically going to say if it's a warning it'll have the exclamation icon otherwise it'll be a check circle icon and then the color very similar approach we're going to have again if it's warning it's going to be a rose color and then if it's a success it's going to be a teal color right and then a little bit of styling to kind of make it finishing touches look good class name margin top of four cool so we've got our call out card ready and it's reusable as a component so let's go ahead and do the first instance of it so here we're going to have our call out card so let's go ahead and pop this in like so we're going to say call out card and then i will pop this in and i'll say message right so here now we've got message you see my nice little pop-up so we've got message and here i'll just say this is where gpt4 summary will go yeah. And as you can see, wait for it, we should get a lovely look at that. Amazing. Right. And what's really nice about this, if I simply pass in a warning, right, now you'll see this will become a nice red message as well. 
So we're going to use that later on for such things like the UV is too high and so forth. Okay. So we're moving at a very good pace right now, guys. And we're almost at 400 likes. So destroy that like button if you haven't already. Right, after this div, we're going to move down. We're going to have another div. Now for all of these individual cards, we're going to create a component called stat card. Okay. And then we're going to reuse that component. And that's going to have a title metric and a color prop associated with it. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So command B. We're simply going to go into the com uh, components and we're going to say stat card dot TSX RFCE inside of here. Oh, this is an old track. If any of you OGs will know this one. When I launched to Papa Fam, this track was banging. So we're going to have a water break right here and smash the like button if you know what I'm talking about. The energy is absolutely nuts. When we launch Zero to Full Stack Hero, again, link is in the description to the best damn developer community on the planet. When we launched it, this was the track that dropped when the beat, when the doors opened to the first ever announcement of the course. It was absolutely incredible. Yeah, you know, oh, it's so cool. Jay just dropped the link in the chat if you want to join us. Head over to popreact.com to absolutely level up your coding game. Right. So for the stack card, we are going to. Oh, that's uh, that brings me back so many memories. That is crazy. So here we're going to go ahead and say the following. So I need to go ahead and import the card. So firstly, we're going to say use client. And then we're going to go ahead and import the following. And then we've got our props. So we're going to say type props and let's define what the props are. Please, can you do a build with material UI? I will definitely consider it. We've got a title prop, a metric prop. Okay, and then we've got a color. Now the color is optional, but the color it has to be basically defined by one of these colors. So there's a reason why I had to do it this way. I'll show you. So we've got indigo, slate, gray, zinc, neutral, stone, red, orange, amber, and so forth. And I'll show you why I've d decided to go and go down this route. Right? Really, they should have had a color option inside the tremor, but these are all the colors that they support. Right? So in this case, I've just defined them here, and then we're gonna destructure it. We're gonna say title metric color from the props and then here we're going to say it's a card with text inside of it whether that by that is the title i'll drop the volume down just a notch and then we've got the metric component which is our metric element right here just like so now that looks pretty good so far. So the color, now I'll show you what happens here. So if you do decoration color, what you'll find is if you hover over it, you'll see, or if you click into it rather, you'll see color, right? Now I can't actually pull this color value, um, but what you'll find is the color values is a read only store uh, of these values. So what we've done is we created a type definition from that color, right? So this color, I couldn't pull it in, right? But in this case, I mean, maybe we could, let's actually give it a try. If I can, that's such a silly mistake, color. Oh my God. Can we do it? No way. Okay. Let me see. Color is okay. Oh my God. Okay. You can do it. So don't ever underestimate yourself. Right? Do, don't do what I did. That was a silly mistake. You can. I thought so. I was like, all right. So color. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> In this case, we say color. That's good. And this is going to be um, expression. Yeah, there we are. Nice. And um, we're going to say decoration color. And let me just restart the music. I don't know where we at. Oh, yeah, that song. This is nice and chill. All right, so we've got the decoration color. Then we're going to have the decoration on the top. And the decoration, all it is is that line, right? So you want to have a different color line for each one. It's quite a nice little finishing touch, right? um mark says legend that's not talking about dude i appreciate you so let's head over here now back and what we can do is we can use our reusable component to actually define those stat cards and i will show you just how easy this is now there's a there's a point that i want to prove here right when i talk about reusable components it's for a purpose right because it's so easy to then build amazing uis like this if you do it once correctly so now we built a stat card so i'm going to show you how we can basically reuse it in different use cases so in this case we've got the stat card so let's go ahead and use it right here so stat card i'm going to import it from the top so stat card and then we've got some components that we have to pull in so in this case the title here will be 
I'm going to say maximum temperature. Temperature. Yeah. And then we've got the metric itself. Now, the metric itself here, I'm actually going to go ahead and copy the value in. So we're going to do a little bit of string interpolation uh, with a little Celsius kind of degree sign. So here we've got two fixed and you can see we've got this little Celsius kind of degree. And then we've got color equals. And if I do this, you see we get all the colors nice. All right. So color. Now, if we do this and refresh, we should see. Look at that. Oh, my God. Like, look how nice that is. Simple, clean, effective. Right, and you see where I'm pulling it from the daily results. Now, what I've done here is I've, I've passed it in from the daily results, the zero index. This means today. I, uh, one would be tomorrow, two would be in two days from now, and so forth. So you can feel free to use that information however you wish, but I, this is how I've done it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is pop this in on. Uh, I've got another one here for minimum temperature, which is using 2m min. And you can see, look, it's just so clean, right? It's so, so clean. Right, Patty says every lesson in the course is well explained and changes my coding skills and problem skills so amazingly. I've already proved it. This course is worth uh, for a developer long life learning part. That's what I'm talking about. That's an OG Papa fan member inside. If you are interested, join Zero to Full Stack Hero. Link is in the description. I'm not joking. These are our own students saying this. That's what I love so much. Right. The next one we're gonna have is a UV index, and I put this inside of a div for a specific reason now. And I'll show you why. So we've got the UV index. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to basically pass a value. And what that value is, is the so forth. So I'm going to go ahead, convert a number to a num. So I'm converting this value, the UV index max for today, to a fixed value. Now, what I've done is I've converted it to a number so I can do a numerical comparison here against five. So if it's greater than five, then I will show a callout card saying the UV is high today with a warning message. Okay, so in this case, UV is seven. So this should be high. Yeah, perfect. And if it was lower than five, so for example, if I made it 10, it had to be greater than 10. This, you wouldn't see that. Perfect. All right, so now you've got a nice little kind of thing that pops in. Solomon, what is up, dude? Good to see you in the house. So we've got a number here. There we go. Uh, we've got that uh, stat, sorry. Up oh, There we go. And then I've got two more for the wind direction and the wind speed. Right, so div, and we are you can be we are going to be using CSS grid here as well, right? So I'm going to do stack card, uh, and in fact, I'm just going to pop this in, make it a little bit easier. I've got two elements here: stack card for the wind speed and wind direction. So, wind speed and wind direction. Okay, I've got milliseconds and um, or meters per second and wind direction with the degrees of the, the, the direction that you're doing with different colors. Okay, so really nice, right? Now for this one, I'm gonna say class and this is gonna be a flex uh, container. So I want them to be squashed into a row with a space of three. And you'll see these will pop next to each other. Again, the whole point is do beautiful things perfectly first. Then you can reuse the components. It makes the entire thing a lot easier right it looks very nice right this is very clean and then what i want to do is that uh div we can leave that parent div but this one at the top div right so the one that we first got the first div this is where i define my css grid so first thing i want to do is grid right i want to make it a grid so if we do that by default nothing changed because it's by default a grid one right grid columns one so what i want to say is Remember, when you're doing any Tailwind CSS stuff, it's mobile first. So by default on the on a mobile, it's gonna be a column of one. Then as we hit an extra large screen, then I wanna go ahead and say, then you go to a grid column two, okay? And then the gap between everything should be a five margin of two, right? So in this case, it will pull in a little bit more. So you'll see it pulls in a little bit more because of the margin two and the gap five between everything is nice. Now, when I hit past a extra large screen, we should see boom, it pops over there. Now this, you're probably wondering, say that looks really stretched out, why? Because think about it, once we actually get that sidebar in, it won't be so, it have so much room. Okay, but that already is looking pretty beautiful. All right, so on a mobile view, on a, a bigger screen, that's so clean, right? By using bit of CSS grid and a correct container management. So I love it, absolutely love it. Right, so we're almost there, guys. We're getting to where we want to get to. Now, for the callout card where the summary goes, I actually want to style that container. So I just want to add a little bit of styling in. I've just completely forgot margin and then around it of two and margin bottom of ten. So give it a little bit of spacing to move away. <clears throat> right. Um, right. So in this case, we've got this perfect stuff. Look at that. That's already looking much more breathable. Okay. Good stuff. Now. Next up, we have 
after all of these divs, we actually need to make sure we do this correctly. So the first div, second div, third div, first div, second div, third div. After this one, we're going to have a horizontal row line. You can actually change that for a divider if you wish, but you're going to have to wrap it in a component if you're using Tremor uh, with a use client directive. So in that case, I'm just doing a horizontal line. So you see that little horizontal line there. And then I'm going to have a div and this is where the charts are going to go, right? So the charts are going to be space Y of three because I want space between them. You can even add a divider as well, but I'm going to have the charts here. So I'm going to have a temperature chart, temperature chart, chart. I'm going to have a rain chart and a humidity chart. So temperature chart, rain chart, and a humidity chart. Cool. So we've got three different charts that are going to go there. These are going to resemble these three individual charts. Okay. So we're actually making significant progress here. I love it. All right. So that's looking pretty good. Now, at this point, I think what we could do is do the information panel. All right. So let's do the information panel. Then we will do the charts. Then we will do the GPT-4 summary and so forth. Okay. So we're actually doing some incredible stuff here. Make sure you smash the like button. We're 10 likes away from the 400 like mark. Absolutely incredible. Uh, you guys have been absolutely amazing. So, okay, let's go. So the information panel. So we're going to go to our components. We're going to say information panel dot TSX RFCE. Boom. Going to go up here, get rid of this. And the information panel, just for reference, is this side part, right? And then on a mobile view, this will become at the top. Right, so we want it to be basically a mobile view and then on the side it's going to be our sidebar but we're going to call it the information panel because i'm weird like that all right um so we've got the information panel here and then what this will do is it will take a few props actually so i'm going to pass through the city the latitude the longitude and i want to pass in the results themselves right so the props are going to come through which means we're going to have to define the props like so um and then I'm going to go ahead and define it here. So I'm actually saved us a little bit of time. I'm going to go ahead and pop in the props like so. Okay. And then we're going to need a bunch of dependencies here. So I'm actually going to save us a little bit of time here by going ahead and popping it in like so. Uh, we haven't got that one yet. That's fine. So we're going to pull in the moon icon, sun icon, image and city picker. Okay. Now starting things off with this div, we're going to go ahead and get rid of that information. We're gonna have a div inside of here with a H1, and the H1 is gonna have a city, right? Now I have made a little helper function which will help us out a little bit. Um, actually, no, I haven't. No, instead we're gonna use a decode URI. So in this case, uh, let's just pop in this. We're gonna say decode, uh, sorry, decode URI, and we pass in the city. And what this is is basically, you know, when sometimes you have escaped characters it essentially removes that escaped character from it so if it's like you know that that kind of weird symbol which represents a space sometimes it's like percentage 20 which resembles a space it basically gets rid of that so in this case it will get rid of that so let's go ahead and just pop this in so we can actually see it on our page so we go back to our page and we go to oh no sorry our uh, location page and we uncomment this out and we import this in now, if I hit save, this will probably error out because, yeah, we don't have it. I mean, right now it says undefined because I'm not passing in the city. So we probably should pass in the values as we can. So the city is equal to the city. The results are going to pass in as the results. The latitude we're passing in and the longitude is the long. Okay. And now we should see the city Banaj. Yeah, there we go. So that's the city that we started the, everything off with. So I chose a random city in the beginning and that will do just fine. We've got the H1 here and we've got the P tag. Um, and then I'm going to say long, lat. And then I will have the following. I'll say long, lat. Yeah. Now let's start this up. Let's go ahead and say that this one should be text extra small. Text should be gray 400. And then the H1 should be a uh, text 6XL. I want it to be much larger. It's pretty dominant. Font should be bold. 
For the surrounding div, I want this to have a padding bottom of five. And then the overall div, I want this to have that blue gradient that we had previously in that initial screen. Text should be white and the padding should be 10. So I'm just gonna pop that in, to save a little bit of time. As you can see, boom. So as soon as we pop that in, immediately looking a lot, a lot cleaner, right? So uh, guys, also we just blew over 400 likes. That's what I'm talking about. That's the energy I'm saying. That's amazing, right? So absolutely awesome stuff. We got the EP, the div, there we go. And now what I love about this is remember, we actually went ahead and created um, reusable components in the beginning from a, uh, a, 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 which was a great use case for it because now we can go ahead and say city picker, right? So in this case, a city picker, we can pop in and just like this, watch super easily. Right, just like that, we have our city picker. And this is the power and beautiful thing about this, right? Because now if I type in something like United Kingdom, let's do London, watch this guys. It will go ahead and fetch the information from London. And just like that, we have it, right? So amazing stuff. You see how the numbers actually change. So if I did United Arab Emirates, I did Dubai. Watch how the temperature changes. That's perfect. That's amazing. We have to figure out this date as well afterwards. It's fine for now. All right, so Dubai, perfect stuff, okay? So next up, we need to go ahead and pop in a horizontal row. And we'll say a margin on the y-axis of 10, separate it. All right, good stuff. And then I'm gonna have a div with a div inside. So we're gonna have a div. Inside of it, I'm gonna have a P tag or actually a div inside of there with a P tag inside of that. And this will have the date, right? So I'm going to pass the date in the following format, right? So here I'm going to go ahead and take the current date. I'm going to format it in GB and I'm going to say weekend should be a long type, numeric long and day for the day. Numeric should be for the day. So here we can see Friday, 21st April, right? For example, uh, we can go ahead and do class name. Text should be extra large. All right, outside of this P tag, we're gonna have a time zone message. So here I'm gonna have the time zone and I'm basically gonna go ahead and resolve the time zone from our current time format, right? So this is our current time zone that we are in, right? So the current time zone that we are in is, so the current time zone that I'm in is Asia, Dubai, right? So that's how you basically go ahead and get your current time zone. Font extra light. So that's a handy little uh, built-in functionality in JavaScript if you did not know. Okay. Now outside of this div in the total surrounding div, we're going to have margin top of five. We're going to have a flex items should be centrally aligned. Justify the space between everything space between all of those things That's 10 and then margin bottom of five. And this is basically going to represent afterwards this. So you see like this kind of, uh, this gap and so forth, All right? So we have to put the, the current time in now as well. So I want to have where I have the time zone outside of that div. This is where I will have a P tag and this one will have the current time. And I want to have it in a 12 hour format, not in a 24 hour format. So this is how you do 12 hour format. You say hour 12 true after you uh, pass in to local time string, you specify which time zone you kind of want. I'm using GBP, uh, GB, sorry. And then you can do hour 12 true. If you do hour 12 false, you will see a 24 hour clock, All right? So in this case, you see 24 hours. So it's completely up to you on how you want to do it. But I know I actually have that, that question a lot of the time. How do you do that? Um, so that's how you do it. All right, class name here. We're going to go ahead and say uh, text XL on bold. We have some crazy focus right now. Uppercase, right? There you go. And just like that, we have a nice little bit of text. Look at that. That's looking beautiful. All right. Now I do want to mention as well, while we're here, if you haven't already remember, check out the university of code, absolutely incredible resource. Um, a little cheeky plug here because trust me, it's one of the best ways to practice your JavaScript knowledge. Everyday coding problems is the way that you can practice that, right? Remember, it's not going to just come to you in a day by watching a video. So coding problems every single day, you get the solution the following day. And I promise you, it's going to be something that you can really benefit from. And it's only $4.99 a month, like a seriously crazy value. We have to create coding problems every single day for you. And we send them to your inbox. Like you're literally getting spoon fed how to how to develop as a, a developer so something i'd recommend you absolutely crush and destroy 
right who's coding along with me right now let me know so in this case we've got the uh that's looking great now after this div we're going to go ahead and pop a horizontal row with a bit of styling Stanley says, yo, love from Toronto. Keep up the good work, brother. That's awesome. Hefty Script says, just tuned in. I'm loving how clean the code is. Thank you so much, bro. I appreciate you. We've got a div next with another div inside. And then here we have an image. Now, the image, I've actually got a, a, a clever kind of approach to this bit. So we'll talk about the image in a second. So this image is going to resemble this. All right. And what I've done here is I've created a little helper function, which we'll sort out in a second. But before we do the image, we're going to have a div. This div is going to have a P tag inside of it. Uh, let's hit save. And this P tag is going to have the current weather in fixed temperature, right? So uh, Jose Suarez says, is the University of Code for beginners as well? It's actually built for beginners. So head over to popriot.com forward slash University of Code. It is completely beginner friendly. Yes. What we actually do is we always give you a level for the challenge so you don't feel disheartened, right? So we'll give you some advanced, some beginners. Every single day we'll challenge you in a different way. And then you can slowly gravitate your level up and you get access to the University of Code community where you can actually chat away with other members who are also solving problems. It's an awesome community to be a part of. And remember, if you really get stuck, feel free to join Zero to Full Stack Hero. That's the OG place to be, right? That's where we literally go ahead and just crush it as a team of developers, right? So here, what I'm going to do is, sorry, I completely missed out. Oh yeah. So here I will now have, here where we have clear sky and this image, I have a helper function to help us achieve this. So I need to actually create that helper function. All right, so here I will say weather code. So what am I talking about here? Well, what we actually have is I need to go ahead and create a function called a weather code to string in the lib, lib folder. So what I want to do is I want to create a new folder called lib. And this is like, think of this like, oops, no. Okay, I don't do it there. Go into a package JSON, create a new folder called lib. Yep, there we are. Go into your lib folder and create a function called weather code to string dot ts. Right now, inside of this file, what I've essentially done is I've created a very helpful helper function. Now, I'm not going to go through every single detail here, but I will explain essentially what I've done in a nutshell. So here we have a simple mapping. Right, so this is a simple mapping and all it does is it takes a key and it returns an icon and a label. So if your key is zero, it will return the icon CO1D and it will return a clear sky label. And what this is, is basically certain weather uh, APIs return a, like weather conditions, right? So some might return a weather code of 80. That typically has a label of rain showers and a specific icon associated with it. So what I've done here is I've created a weather code to string. So I'm gonna just scroll down and you can feel free to pause the video and copy this out. Or you have access to all of this inside of uh, the Papa GitHub repo, right? So this is a helper function that we've created to go ahead and help benefit us. So I'm going to go away from that now and I'm going to use our helper function. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply pop in the following. So the image is actually going to get pulled from that. But before we actually do anything like the image, I'm just going to go ahead and use our helper function to get the label for the current weather code. So I'm going to replace this with the following. So I'm going to import my helper function from the top like so. All right. And then <laughs> I love that. We're almost up 500 likes. I absolutely love that. All right. So now you can see weather code to string. We pass in the current weather code and then we get the label for it. Now, if I go over here, you can see 28 degrees clear sky, right? So in this case, the API is returning a weather code. We're then using our helper function to determine what the label is for it, right? Now the image, I've done the same thing, but except I'm pulling the image from weatherbit.io images, right? So in this case, what I will do is I will replace this with an image tag. And then here you can see what I've done is I've concatenated. So I've actually got a URL here and then I've concatenated the icon code and then it'll be .png. Right, and then the alt tag is simply the label. We've got width and height. So I've got, I've imported the image tag from the next image. Now we will get an error because we need to go ahead and whitelist weatherbit.io from our list of images to allow optimization from. So in order to do this, we simply go into our next config. We go out of the experimental tab. We say images, domains, oops, images, domains. And we simply pop in weatherbit.io. 
okay hit save close your term your server run your server once again because you've made a change to your next config and then do the following Yes, if you're using Hero Icons V2, then you would need to import the icons from Hero Icons React 24 Solid. Yes, I agree with you. That is correct. Yeah. Completely up to you on how you want to do that. So at this point, now what we can do is we can go back to our code and we can refresh. Okay. So let's refresh this. Same weight on my ears today. So as you can see now, we should see, hey, there we are. Perfect stuff, right? Now, if I go to London, for example, United Kingdom, city, and let's just wait for it, type in London, boom. Now you can see rain showers with a rain shower icon. That's awesome. Nice. So we've got our nice little uh, our icon set perfectly working. So we go to our div. Let's start styling it out. Say flex items center justify between. And now we should have things pushed across. In the div here, we've got in this div, we're going to say flex items center justify between space x of 10 there we are and then we have our um da, da, da. let's just have a look yes yeah, so that's perfect that's what we wanted and then we want to change our p tag here to be much larger so we're going to say text 6xl font should be semi bold the P tag here should be text right. Font should be ultra light or extra light, sorry. And then it should be text, should be large. And just like that, we should have a massive difference here with this. There we go. That's looking immediately better. All right, so justify between, justify between, item center, awesome stuff. Okay. And with that said now, that is looking a lot cleaner. So I just want to check something here. Yeah, so you can see that's perfect. That's what we wanted. Yeah. And now after this div, we want to do the following. So after that div, we can exit the div down. So we can go from this div down outside of here. And then we can start building out the rest of it. So we've got a div here. And then we are now building Someone says, Papa fam, I love you. <laughs> I love you guys too. Right, so after that, we can have this area. So the sunrise and sunset, right? So here we've got essentially two copied and pasted kind of setups, right? So I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit easier for you to follow by simply popping in a snippet and then we're going to show you how I break it down. So you see this snippet right here. So I'm just pasting it in, right? So you can feel free to revise the snippet and see for yourself what we've just added in. But essentially what we did here was we added a div, sun icon in, a bunch of styling in so just for the colors. And then we've got a div with a flex inside of it. We've got the children, one of them is just sunrise. We've got a P tag to represent the uh, time. And you can see justify between has pushed these across from each other. And then you've got the sun icon around it. So the sun icon is next to it. Then you've got the P tag. And then you've got the, the div, sorry, with justify between. And it's flex one, so it takes up the majority of the room. Okay, we've got the exact same approach for the other moon icon, except that it won't be sunrise, it'll be sunset. All right, so what I want to do is go outside of this div, simply pop that in like so. And now we have sunset as well. Nice. Now at the top level div, I want to say space should be between each Y child. And we're going to say padding on the Y axis of five. And what this does, it'll space these out and it'll give it a bit of padding around it. There we go. So just like that, absolutely beautiful. And we have our sidebar essentially complete. We just now need to make it appear to the side of the screen when we have the setup correct, which means that we have to go to the page.tsx. So this is our page for the entire page. So now heading back over to that page, I want to go ahead and basically configure the surrounding div. So this is where everything gets styled out. So this div is where the magic happens. We say by default on a mobile, it should be flex column. So it should be in this view. Okay. 
Then what we want to say is firstly, it should be a min height of screen. So that way it will always fill up the color of the screen, but on a medium screen or above, it will change into a flex row. Now, let me show you what happens. So as we hit a medium screen, boom, look at that. Very nice. Now, the only issue we have here is that this div does not use flex one. So how do we fix this? We simply go over to the div here, which is using that remainder of that space. We say flex one padding of five. And I'm going to say on a large screen padding of 10. Now let's give it a try. We go over here. Now you can see it's using up the full space and it's got the, uh, uh, the uh, appropriate padding. So look at that. Absolutely beautiful. That is absolutely lovely. Look at that. Really, really nice. All right. So uh, look at that. It's just so clean. Come on. Like so, so clean. United Arab Emirates. Let's go back to Dubai. Bam. All right. We've got to Abu Dhabi. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, now, if we just say Albania, uh, Banaj, that initial one. Go to Armenia. I'm just picking random cities here. All right. So, United Kingdom, back to London. Because London's obviously got great weather, right? always raining <laughs> all right so at this point that's really good all right so looking looking really good so let's get the correct time for sunset and sunrise oh yes you're right actually so it appears that the api is not actually returning the um the correct times for this yeah you're right so it's 4 a.m um so where have i put the sunset sunrise so let's go to the information panel and right now at the bottom where is it sunset sunrise okay so it looks like my api call that i initially made was maybe a little bit wonky this is the same 4 a.m 4 a.m oh that's because it, i mean so it's not actually pulling in the correct dates i believe all right we can debug that at the end for sure we can debug that at the end yeah so this is actually what is returning and as you can see the time zone the time was actually being returned here and then, yeah, we should have had it back. And then if we go to sunrise, you can see sunrise. Yeah, so we are getting time back, which is interesting. We're not getting the, the correct time though. Okay. I mean, we'll have a look at that. We'll come back to it. Uh, I will check to make sure that we actually conquer that bit because I do want to get that right. In fact, I just want to check the URL that we initially called. So this was the URL that we initially called. Um, so I have a feeling we're not passing in the correct details into our query so i just want to check something let's go to our fetch weather queries tunisia in the house was up fetch weather queries right so i'm just going to check something right now we have the weather code temperature and all that good stuff clear skies just like so i just want to double check that i have this perfectly written yeah so that's the exact same and then when I call it is the next question. So when we have the page and then where is it? It's here. So uh, in page, let's have a look. Let's just double confirm this. So the variables that we pass through is the same. Yeah. Uh, okay. So it's interesting. Uh, I'm not quite sure to me. So I think to be honest, what could have happened is it could have maybe Let's go ahead and disable the cache and refresh. Okay, interesting. We'll have a look as to why that happened afterwards. But right now, my yeah, my time isn't seem to be rendering correctly. Interesting. All right, um, let's carry on and we'll come back to it. So I think the next natural step is the charts. Let's get the charts down. And then we've got GPT summary and then we are good for deployment, which is amazing. All right, so let's do first up is the temperature chart so for the temperature chart what we will do is create a component so temp chart dot tsx and this is essentially going to be once we do one of them honestly it's very easy to replicate All right so rfce and this is going to be a temperature chart it's going to take uh let's go up get rid of this it's going to be a use client because we are using some stuff from tremors we're going to import the things that we need we're going to have a type props and this will have the following inside of it. It will have results, which is of type root. Okay. Temperature charts is going to be the results. Okay. That's the prop that comes through. 
and now we need to do the magic binder so firstly let's just show what we're going to render so here it's going to be it doesn't matter if it's tsx yes because tsx is essentially saying you're returning jsx as well right so it's tsx right so in this case we've got the card and that's weird okay the card and then here i want to have the title this title will say temperature and uv index because it's going to contain both the temperature and uv index now feel free at this point as well to also pause and go over to tremors.io to look at the line graph documentation they actually break it down really easily really nicely and then you can come back here to kind of you know inspect how i've done it but here i'm going to use something called an area chart and then we've got to do a bunch of things right so we have to give it a bunch of information so we have to firstly provide the data now the data here we have to map it into its correct format and we also have to do the same thing with the hourly information now the hourly information that comes back from the api if we go up to hourly what you'll find is that this has information for every single hour one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve all the way up for like you know a very long time we only need the first 24 to get the day right so what we will do here is we will say we'll basically we're going to only get the first 24 right and we're going to change each of them to a 24 hour uh, um, um, time instead so we're going to say const so this is called data transformation right so we're going to say const hourly equals results dot hourly so results could be uh, you know that we have to protect ourselves dot time dot map right and for each bit of time what I'm doing is I'm returning, so I'm directly returning a new date whereby we pass through the time and we say to locale string. Oops. Dot to locale string. Yep. And then I'll say dot enus. And then I'm passing in the hour is numeric and the hour 12 is going to be for false because I want it to be in a 24 hour sense. And then what we're doing is we're mapping through at that point and then we're going to slice. Now, what the good thing about this is I want the first up until the 24th value. So this will give me every all the only the first 24 hours right from this. So I'm basically correcting this down now and this will basically become 00, 01, 02, 03, 04, all the way up until 24. Okay. So that, that's actually a really nice little trick you don't know. Uh, you, you may not know, yeah? So in this case, the next one is we need to prepare the data. So the data has to be in a specific format. So I'm going to map through those hourly things that we just went ahead and uh, provided. Then I'm going to go ahead and say each hour, and we also have the index, and I'm going to return a object. So I'm doing parentheses with a, a curly brackets inside. First key is going to be the time. And this is going to be the number for hours. So I'm passing the hour as a number. Okay. Second is going to be the different things we want to have on our graph. So, you know, our Y, uh, our X axis. So in this case, we're going to map against the UV index or the actually, this is going to be the time will be the X axis. The Y axis is going to be the UV index and the temperature. So in this case, it's going to be UV index. And this is going to have, yep. So it's going to be UV index and it's going to have the results, the hourly UV index, and it's going to be I, yep. And then we're going to have the temperature as well. Now the temperature, I'm going to say temperature and I want to have C for Celsius. Okay. And this is going to be just like, so hourly temperature two minutes and then it's I. So now what we're doing is we're mapping through and we're putting the data in the perfect way in which area chart expects it. Okay. So let's start styling it out. So class name is going to be margin top of six. And then let's pass through the data. So the data is coming through like so. We're going to say that we should show the legend. We want the index. So what is the X axis essentially? Well, this is going to be the time, right? So this is going to correlate to that. So the time, then we have the categories. Now this is going to have to exactly match the key values here. So temperature and UV index. And then we've got the colors. Now each one that we pass in inside this array will correspond to. So yellow will be for temperature. Rose will be for UV index. Then we have the minimum value. The minimum value here, we want to set to a manual value of zero. And then we've got the value formatter. So in this case, you can format each of the values. Now, I've essentially just made it very simple. So every time you look at a value on that graph, it's going to format with a value of Celsius, right? So yes, I know it doesn't, it's, it's not going to be UV, it's going to be Celsius. But for this one instance, I'm letting it go, right? Just for demo purpose, right? So it's completely fine. But I'll show you, it'll make a lot of sense what happens. And then the y-axis width is like essentially padding on the y-axis for the legend, right? So we have our temperature chart. So now if I go to my page 
and I simply replace this with the temperature chart like so and then we pass through the results right so the results will be the results here I go to my local host I hit save and I refresh and hopefully we'll see how this goes so now you can see oh look at that guys so in the Benage right now, it's pretty wild actually. Oh my God. Oh, so this is 444. Four. Okay. So the time is not being passed correctly. So we've got the same issue that we had previously. So I need to inspect and debug. So right now the data coming back is not returning the results that I expect it to. Right. So what we need to do here is actually, I need to actually go ahead and inspect my results. So I want to inspect firstly the daily units. So let's just go ahead and console log just the daily refresh. And I want to have a look what's happening here. So if we go all the way up here, you see it's quite, quite intense actually how much we get. So let's look at temperature. Um, da, 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 da. Let's look at the, so what is our X axis firstly? Let's have a look. So. Let's go to our temperature chart. So temperature chart, and then we mapped hourly dot time. Okay, so hourly dot time is what I had to inspect. So let's have a look at that hourly. So we're debugging right now. So hourly dot time, and let's have a look at what values are coming back, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and refresh, and you can see no. So we're not actually getting any time back. So this is a bit of a problem that we have to fix. Right. So why are we not getting our time values back is the question. That is the golden key. <laughs> um, so right now, I believe it's because we're not doing the execution of that query correctly. So let's have a quick check at our code and let's have a look what's happening. So it's because we did not we did not do our setup correctly, I believe, with our query. So let's go back to our. This is good. Yes. Then we go to our Apollo client. That's fine. No, sorry. Step Zen. Uh, Cal index. Here we are. All right. So we got the forecast. We've got our current weather, our daily, our hourly, our latitude, longitude, and time zones. All right. And then we've got everything here. Now, I think what I've done is I've made a mistake with the way I'm reading the information. So I have a feeling my type definitions might be wrong. So we have time is date time. Um, and I just need to double check that everything is correct as in what I saw before. So hourly dot time. So hourly, so like hourly. And then we go to the hourly time is daytime so i'm just checking on my other machine so hourly daytime string so i believe the issue here is actually that the time is being passed as date time here when in fact it should actually be a string value so this is going to cause an issue so we're going to change this to a string value and then what i also want to check is um that we have that correct in other areas so we're going to change that to a string value. And then where we have time here, that's great. Sunrise and sunset should have also been string values. So this, this, and this all should also be string values. All right. So not date time, but string values. I believe that's what's happened here. So let's now do the call again. So refresh. And let's, uh, it would have cached the page. So you would have to refresh with disabled cache on the network tab. And boom, look at that guys. That's what debugging is about. Oh yeah, got the time out. So we've got the correct time now, which is banging. It's just the hourly markers. So my slice function is clearly not working here. This is doing the entire day. This is like days and days and days of data, <laughs> which is not right. Okay, so we have to now get this correct. So basically go through your schema and make sure that it's not date time, it's string. So it can only, remember, it's trying to interpret itself. So very easy fix that, but we found it. So now what I want you to do is go over to your, um, this is now we need to go over to our temperature chart and we need to basically find where I'm slicing. 
because this is why I'm basically screwing everything up. So where I messed it up was here. So let's cut out the slice. Let's do this. So for now, if I map through, where's my ending map? So my map finishes here. What I was making the mistake of is I was slicing here, which is not correct. Afterwards, we want to slice here, zero to 24. That's correct. Now what you'll find is if I hit a refresh, boom, that's what I'm talking about, guys. Now I'm slicing the correct values. So look at that. So now we're getting 24 up until 23. That's perfect. So this is kind of midnight, one, two, three, four, five, up until 11 o'clock at that night. That's amazing. That's exactly what I wanted. I'm very happy with that. Right now, at this point, you could also you could obviously slice if you didn't want this, you could do like one up until 25 or whatever you want to do. It's completely your call. OK, um, Violent says, I just want to drop you a quick message to say thank you for teaching ReactJS and great builds. Your teacher style is really easy to follow and I learned so much from your tutorials. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's absolutely awesome. And um, yeah, I appreciate you for that. That's absolutely a very nice comment for you to say. So thank you so much. Okay, but this is uh, this is good. This is very good, right? We're making good progress here. So now we have our temperature graph nailed in. And you can see here, look, that date formatter is putting a Celsius on the UV index. If you really want to make this perfect, honestly, what you do is you go to your date formatter and you just return the number, right? Because you already got the Celsius in the in the, um, the other bit. But if you wanted it to say Celsius, and by the way, what you'll find here is when you re you have to refresh sometimes for the responsiveness to kick in right because you are rendering a graph so you may get little issues like that but it's completely good right and even if you go here sometimes you see like it doesn't refresh but if you refresh when it rebuilds it will get it perfect okay so don't stress it is responsive right so in this case uv index perfect okay now let's do the other graphs so we've got this graph down and i want to do the exact same thing but for another graph so i want to copy my graph and I'm simply going to go ahead and change my temp chart to, oh, this reminds me of the Twitch days. <laughs> so we're going to change this one to rain chart now. Rain chart dot TSX. And what I'm going to do is I'm inside a rain chart now. I'm going to go through and just refactor some things. So I'm going to say chart. This is going to be called um, my rain chart. Okay. Uh, the exact same things are going to apply. We are going to have the same slicing happening for the hours, except here, we're only going to have one uh, in, uh, indicator here. And we're going to have a rain percentage, rain percentage. And what we're doing is we're saying hourly precipitation probability, right? Go back down here and we say chances of rain, chances of rain. Okay, and then for the area chart here, we've got the exact same situation, except for here, what we're going to do is we only got one index. We don't need this one. We can keep it as an array. It doesn't really make it too much of a difference. And this one has to exactly match up with this. So we pop that in there, get rid of the second one and data formatter. We can actually go ahead and safely say it's percentage. Now for the percentages, your max value is going to be hundred. Your min will always be this. So that is how we always work in percentage world. So rain chart, there we go. Now, what we can do is we simply import it into our page. So go back to our page, head down to where our other one was. And we say rain chart. Like so passing the results like so and just like that we now have it. i'm just going to make my camera a little bit brighter there we go and just like that we have chances of rain zero so let's look somewhere where it's likely to rain right so you can imagine where i'm thinking united kingdom <laughs> right so london always has rain right now today does it have, yep i told you it always has rain right so in this case like 87 percent chance of rain at four. Oh, the timing's also messed up here oh god okay so i fixed it and then i broke it so where did i fix and what happened okay let's have a look so okay i've gone back to not fixing something so let's go back to our step zen co i had this all fixed no come on Oh, okay. So the reason being, sorry, why you might see this. So this is a very good learning point. 
what happens is it's caching right so you actually did everything perfectly but you had a cache value on the page hit the refresh button with this disable cache and then you will get the fresh data so that is something you have to be very careful of okay so disable cache in the network tab when you're deving you want to make sure you actually update that because now you can see that it was fine but you'd sit there for ages trying to figure out what the hell is going on right someone says check for serbia belgrade serbia belgrade let's see oh there you go <laughs> nice there you go i'm see I'm, I'm with you dude um really good stuff right let me know kakashi if that's correct <laughs> but in this case now what we can do is the final one which is actually the um the da, 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 the humidity chart right so we're going to do the same approach guys we're going to go ahead into our rain chart then we're going to go ahead and we're going to rename it to humidity chart right humidity chart dot tsx right so humidity chart we're going to change rain chart to be humidity humidity okay and then we're now going to go ahead and just basically swap this out with the information from the humidity right so fairly straightforward all we're going to do here is swap out where it says rain i can press command d to, to get multi cursors humidity change the precipitation probability to the relative humidity two minute marker and then it's still going to be percentage and everything else is pretty good except the color here i want it to be till okay hit save and this one the max value we're not going to have a zero oh actually we are because it's going to be I guess it's going to be up to 100 so that would be pretty handy to have it there and then what we do is we simply go ahead and we take our humidity chart we pass through the results just like so and we make it a self-closed component we hit save and we go ahead into our page and we see for ourselves the results and i think i've forgotten one thing yeah i've forgotten to change chances of rain we see the humidity is there uh, let's just go into the temperature and yes you could probably make a responsive um you know you could probably customize this with different props so that way you're not you know passing in the same kind of data because you could make this a reusable component really right this one will be uh, humidity levels so humidity levels awesome stuff now just like that we have humidity levels looking bomb right so that's absolutely beautiful Right, and then the UV index is 6.2 if it's high, but otherwise, if it was lower than that, it wouldn't be. So, someone let me know if it's uh, uh if it's, someone says uh, someone's in program it seems to be wrong sometimes. No, so the time is actually correct, but it's offset against um, Dubai time. So, in Dubai at 3:42, it would be your sunrise. That's essentially what's happened, right? So that's where the offsets happened, and the sunset in Dubai 5:31 would be Belgrade's um sunset so that's actually what's so what you're doing is you're looking at this in regards to this so for for me that would be your sunrise that's essentially what's happened yeah um okay so next up guys we have the fun part the part where you've all been waiting for and everyone's been very patient i must say yeah so now what we're going to do is we are actually going to go ahead and create um the chat gpt section of the build right so now we're actually going to go ahead and pass in the data from that massive json that we had we're going to clean the data then we're going to create an endpoint which communicates with open ai's uh, api and then we're actually going to use gpt4 and you can use gpt3.5 to go ahead and create the summary and the summary will be looking like this and it will essentially go ahead and provide a perfect breakdown of what the hell is going on right so really really amazing stuff uh time zone is in asia dubai yes this is um asia dubai yeah this is 527 is asia dubai that is correct um there you go so let's carry on so at this point now um so it's doing it relative to me okay so that's what i was trying to say so now what we're going to do is someone says how are you i'm doing well thank you how are you All right so at this point we are going to also before i carry on let's actually implement a loading right section so where we have um any loading situation right so uh in this case if you're at the home screen and you are initially loading for example a page right so if we go back to the home screen 
and you're loading a page right now you're just waiting okay so at this point what i might do is i'm going to use in xjs 13 you've actually got this beautiful thing you can adjust the time zone um according to city chosen but i'm not getting into that right now because there's a lot of things that we have to do you can feel free to extend it yourself do that right loading.tsx so rfce boom that should is relatively easy in the grand scheme of all of this stuff right so loading um and now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to have a simple loading now i'm not going to spend too much time describing how i built the loading screen it's very kind of straightforward in regards to the actual stuff that i'm putting on there it's just a div with a bunch of stuff inside of it and this is the styling we have so it's going to be a sun icon loading city weather information hold on we're crunching some numbers and so forth now i want to have the same loader it will actually carry over but i found that in some cases it was being a bit weird so i'm going to put the same loader in here now that means at this route we're going to load it and at this loop this route we're also going to load it but typically it should just kind of use the highest level one if it doesn't have one at a local level now with that said what we should find is anytime we have a blocking element for example this is a blocking element sorry this one is a blocking element it will go ahead and cause the uh, loader to kick in so if we do country for example albania we do something like um delvin look at that loading city weather information boom nice right and then if we do albania sort of like i'm just doing albania because it's there Barat, boom and if i did like united kingdom because we already have a cash value it shouldn't actually load very much so it'll be london boom you see that because it already had a cash value so it didn't actually need to load it right the only thing that I would recommend here is because you've got cached values, you still want it to revalidate after a certain point in time. So to make sure that it revalidates, you can do a very simple change here. Go to the top, simply pop in revalidate, export cons, revalidate 60. Now, every 60 seconds, it will revalidate the cache. Simple as that. Now you've got ISR. You've got incremental static regeneration of that static page. So every 60 seconds, it will trigger a rebuild of the cache page provided that someone has visited it so that is absolutely awesome All right quick little water break and then we're going to go ahead and do chat gpt so we've actually implemented the albi says you're the best bro thank you so much i appreciate you man All right so at this point now we're going to create the endpoint for open ai All right so what we're going to do is we're going to use the new the brand new open ai um brand new nextjs 13 roots right so in this case you see in the app we have our api and we have a hello root right so this is simply a hello sort of um endpoint right now i'm going to delete that because i don't really care about the hello endpoint and then i'm going to go ahead and create a new api endpoint called get weather summary get weather summary okay and inside of get weather summary the new syntax is all you need to do is type in root.ts cool and now inside of root.ts we are going to basically create a uh, post request support, right? And what's nice about this is you can go ahead and, you know, support post requests, get requests, put update patch, all that kind of stuff. But here, this is how you do a post request. And you could do the same for get and so forth, right? But we're going to do only a post request is supported at this route. Very simple. Then what I want to do is I need to install OpenAI. So we're actually going to be using OpenAI's API here. So let's head over to OpenAI. Um, and let's do OpenAI documentation. So API documentation. And something I want to mention is that in Zero to Full Stack Hero, inside of our course, we have actually gone through this extensively in recent coaching calls. So I highly recommend if you're on the fence, you kind of want to, you know, learn a bit more about this stuff and you want to do a deep dive, check us out at Zero to Full Stack Hero or scan the QR code on the screen right now. Right. And that's going to help you basically get dialed in with any of this stuff because we've done this loads in coaching calls. So we're going to install open ai at the package so let's go ahead and do it right now so command j and then i'm going to go ahead and pop in like so so remember make sure you're in the correct folder so the top level install open ai like so now while that's doing it we also need to have an open ai key right so this is very important because you need to pass it inside of your requests right so what i want to do is go into my personal view api keys and so forth so i've got a few keys here you can go ahead and create a new key now it's worth mentioning yes you do get a free tier i believe when you're using open ai so chat gpt 3.5 you're getting a free tier and it's also worth mentioning that chat gpt uh, gpt sorry 3.5 turbo is extremely cheaper 
than GPT-4 because GPT-4 requires a lot more kind of like calculation intensity, I guess, on their side to go ahead and process your input and output. It's also slower than GPT-3.5 Turbo. So it's something worth mentioning. So if you're testing this out, I I ran up like $5, but um, you'll get a free quota here. So you can probably use your free quota for as long as you want. But I added a billing um, card to my account so I could just keep testing this thing. I didn't care about paying $10 or whatever. So you can go ahead and do that, right? So in this case, um, what I'm going to do is generate a new secret key. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to name my key. So I'm going to call this YouTube uh, demo key. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a secret key. So I'm going to go ahead and create it right now. You guys thought I was going to give away my key, didn't you? Then I'm going to copy that key. All right. So now I've copied my key. Okay. So I'll copy that key. And then you go back to this screen. Okay. So now I've got my YouTube demo key here. And then what I want you to do is go over to your environment file. Okay, so head over to your environment file. Where's mine? I'm going to click into it. Now I'm going to hide some delicate environment file information right now. So I'm going to go ahead and hide some quick little information as I show you something. So I'm just going to pretend that I like, I'm just going to comment this out one second. Okay, I don't know how to do my little trick. Okay, my trick don't work anymore. Um, but what I'll do is I'm going to hide this. So I basically got rid of uh, one of my keys. And then I've gone ahead and said open. You should have had your API, your next public step zen API key here as well. But now I've got my open AI API key. And I will paste that value here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and paste that value in. So now I've pasted that value in. And then I'll put back my old key, the one that I've just removed a second ago. So you should have in your environment file, I'll just say it out loud. You should have your API URL. You should have a next public steps and API key. And you should have an open AI API key. Okay. So those two things save and then close your file. Cool. Now we have our environment set up. Okay. So that's done. And then we have our open AI should have installed correctly. There we go. It has installed. All right. So cool. So now what I want to do is I want to import two dependencies into my project. Boom, like so. And here you can see at OpenAI. Cannot find OpenAI or it's a corresponding da da da. Oh yeah, because now I need to actually create a helper file. So at the top level, at the package JSON level, create a OpenAI.ts file. Okay. Now inside of this OpenAI.ts file, we are going to go ahead and create a little bit of a setup file for us, right? So this is very simple. We're simply going to import two things, configuration, OpenAI, uh, and the API. Then we're going to create a new configuration by passing in the OpenAI API key. So this has to correlate to your environment key value. Okay. So then you export it. So you basically create a new OpenAI API configure by passing the configuration in. So this is your connection to OpenAI. Then we export it so we can use it. So heading back over here. Now, if we do this, why is this freaking out? So at this point, where's my open AI? It should be completely fine. I'm not sure why it's being weird. Yeah. So there you go. It's working. Okay. Yeah. So we have our post request now. So now we can do the magic stuff, right? So here I basically, I'm going to pass into that post request some data in the weather data part of that JSON object, right? So I'm going to pass through uh, some weather data in the body, right? So this is going to be uh, weather data is going to be in the body, in the body of the post request, right? So imagine that comes in in the body of the post request. Then what we'll do is we'll say const response equals await, right? Open AI dot create chat completion. Okay, so create chat completion. Now, here's where the magic happens, really, right? So the first thing you want to do is put the model in. Okay, so model is going to be, uh, essentially, it's going to be GPT-4 if you have access to the GPT-4 API. I do have access to the GPT-4 API, so we can use it. But if you don't have access to it, that's fine. Okay, you can use the GPT-3.5 Turbo, which is available to everyone. And it's also worth mentioning that this completely works fine with the build. Right, so you can use GPT 3.5 as well, right? But I have got access to GPT 4, so we can use that. Okay, next up, 
you will get a 401 if you try to do this with GPT-4 and you don't have access to it, right? But you can request access on the website. So in this case, now we're going to go ahead and say temperature is going to be 0.8. This is a value between 0 and 2. And it basically sim symbolizes how random or focused it should really be. The number of responses we want is 1. We're going to disable the stream because we only want the entire value to come back in one go and then we're going to pass in the messages okay now the messages is an array of items right so we need to basically pass in the conversational aspect of what we're going to be doing so the role in the beginning is going to be the system message this essentially sets up what the context is for the chat so you can use the system message in a way to be like that you you should pretend that you're a weather news presenter and you're going to present the news in this kind of way and all of that kind of stuff. So you're basically setting it up before the chat's even begun. And then you can provide it a second piece of information saying, hey, actually, here's the today's weather in this format. And this is going to be the JSON information. And then what it will do is it will give us the response back. Right. So it's going to be perfectly primed in a way to give us back the information that we're after. So what I've done is I've been a bit overkill here just to extend, like be a bit crazy about it. But I've said, pretend you're a weather news presenter presenting live on television. Be energetic and full of charisma. Uh, introduce yourself as Sunny so you can introduce yourself as whatever you want. And say you are live from the Pop Farm headquarters. State the CEO is providing a summary for. Then give a summary of today's weather only. Make it easy for the viewer to blah, blah, blah. Okay. So you can go ahead and do that kind of thing. Yeah. So, um, and provide you provide a joke regarding the weather. Assume the data came from your team at the news office and not the user. Because what was happening, it was like, it was saying to me, oh, based on the JSON data that you provided, and I didn't want it to say, I just want to say, hey, tuning in here from Sunny at the headquarters of Pop Farm, the weather today is so forth, right? So that's what we kind of wanted it. The next one is you're going to pretend to be the user, and the user is going to say the following. The user is going to say, we're going to do string interpolation here. It's going to say, hi, hi there. Can I get a summary of the weather? So it's going to be something that's hi there. Can I get a summary of today's weather? Use the following information to get the weather data. And then what we're doing is we're stringifying the weather data. So it becomes a piece of text, right? And really, this is quite nice, right? So what this is actually doing is it's stringifying that data. We're not going to pass the entire data in, by the way. We're going to clean it up. So you're not going to pass that entire chunk because then you're you're running through your tokens like nothing, right? Um, and bear in mind that this can be token exhaustive, right? If you look at this, this could be actually considered quite a lot of tokens. So just bear that in mind, okay? So if you're going to run through your quota pretty quick and consider maybe adding a card just while testing this out, that kind of thing, right? Then we're going to basically get the response, the data out of the response, okay? And then what we'll do is I'm just going to debug here. So I'm going to say something like um, uh, data is and then data. And that, that allows me when I'm debugging it, it's actually a pretty handy thing that you can do. And then all I care about is what did it reply, right? So next response, data.choices0 would be the first response that it gave us, dot message, right? And if everything was successful, this would have the response for the summary inside of it, okay? Cool. So at this point now, what we're going to do um, is we're going to go back to my page and we're going to go ahead and create a cleanup function. So something which allows us to essentially clean the data. So the reason why I need to clean the data kind of function is because I don't want to pass in the entire object, right? Um, the entire results, because the results is so big that ChatGPT can right now, even on the... Um, even on the GPT-4 model, it can it can handle up to 8K context or the bigger model can handle up to 32K context, but you're paying per that many, uh, I think it's like three cents per like a thousand uh, tokens or something like that. But the point is you just like, we want to minimize it, right? It doesn't need all the data, especially if it's only giving me the things for today. Right? So we can actually save ourselves a lot of money, right? So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll create inside of our lib folder. I'm going to create a clean f data um, file. And what this is doing is just basically transforming it so it's a lot cleaner. So we don't have a lot of the bloat behind it. Okay. Now, what I'm doing is I'm saying clean, uh, const clean data, const clean data equals, and I'm passing in two things. I'm passing in the data, which is of type root, and I'm passing in the city, which is of type string. Okay. And then what I'm doing is I'm return. I'm basically saying the following thing. So I'm taking the following properties from 
the um uh i'm taking the following properties from uh the following so i'm stripping out the current weather time zone hourly hourly units and time zone abbreviation from data okay then i'm stripping out the following from current weather so then i'm getting the temperature wind speed wind direction weather code and time from current data work from current weather then i'm getting the uh, some specifics from the hourly because i don't care about daily and all that kind of stuff i just need from the hourly information that i stripped out i need temperature snowfall rainfall relative humidity precipitation uv index right now with that said i'm going to return a new object only including some of this information right so i'm going to say return and then what i'll do is i'll return the current weather with a key value like this uh welcome to the stream liam good to see we've got the current weather then i'm going to have the hourly information which is going to be the following and what i'm doing here is i'm passing back the temperature snowfall rain relative humidity precipitation and uv index but i'm slicing only the first 24 hours worth of data so that way i'm not including all of the extra information because otherwise what's going to happen is you're going to have so much extra information that it just ruins your quota with chat gpt right and that's just pointless then we've got time zone city um time zone abbreviation hourly units and city i'm passing in and actually extending the object to so now we have not only a smaller object from that initial large results object but now it's also got the city uh, character in so that way when i pass it to chat gpt or gpt4 it knows what it's doing okay so it knows what city it's in sorry that way it can kind of provide that useful information okay so now what do we do we go back and where we have the results here i'm gonna have uh, a new variable called data to send right or the results to send and what this would be is it will be we're gonna say clean data and i'm gonna pass in the results and i'm gonna pass in the city okay and that will be the clean data yeah and then what we'll do is i can get rid of this now i'm going to say const res equals await fetch and now i'm going to make a call to my back end right now i'm also going to make a helper function here because what we need to do is we can't just say for slash api for slash summary because we're in a server function now the server function does not know where it is right it doesn't know if its relative path is local host or if its relative path if there is is the vercel url so i'm going to create one more helper function in lib and this is going to be called get base path right and this will tell um our, our basically our code but where the hell your base path is right so this base path is going to look something like this we're going to export default get base path and what we're saying is if you're in the development environment it's going to be localhost 3000 otherwise and obviously you can then go ahead and even go further with the port number and all that otherwise it's going to be https forward slash process and vercel and this is basically once you've deployed it that's where you'll be deployed to vercel will automatically be given to you and then that would be your base path okay and you can get some debugging issues when you're having this bit. So make sure you take care, okay? So here what we'll say is we'll do the following. We'll say uh, get base path, like so, forward slash API, forward slash get weather summary. Okay, so forward slash get weather summary. And then we'll have the object and it will be a post object. The headers are going to be content type application JSON. The body is going to be a stringified weather data. So in this case, we're going to pass. Remember, the weather data is what we set up our route. And we're actually going to give it the data to send, not results. Okay, so that way it's a lot more cleaner in when it's dealing with it. Now, that will go ahead and get us back the GPT data, right? So what we can do is we can get the GPT data and pass it out. So just like so. And then we can go ahead and extract the content out of that message. Okay, so we can extract the content out of that message. Now, once we have that, we can basically go down here and remember where we say this is where the GPT-4 summary will go. We can actually go ahead and straight away put that here. Now, if we did all of that correct, what we should have is a clean data function which will clean out the results into a smaller, more efficient object. We will then go ahead and make a request to our API which will then go ahead and pretend it's a weather presenter. It will use GPT-4. It will be um, connected to our correct configuration but with our open API, open AI key. And then it will return us the data, which with the message inside of it, 
and that will basically will pull the content from that message and then we will pass it into the call out card okay and now with that said we might have everything optimally done so clean data uh, let's go ahead and refresh so it's loading the city weather information. Clean data is not defined. Okay. So where is clean data? I don't think I've actually exported clean data. That's a problem. Yeah, I haven't. So clean data. Yeah. So we didn't export it. My bad. Export. Default clean data. And then we go down here. Import clean data. And now let's give it a try, guys. So let's go ahead. And remember, you want to go ahead and disable your cache when you do your first reload clear this out so now it's loading the city weather information and remember what it's probably going to take a little bit more time for in the initial run is that it's actually calculating the gpt summary and gpt4 is known to be a lot slower than gpt 3.5 turbo now this is using gpt4 right now to come back with a summary so let's see if it did it All right let's get hyped up because this is a moment of truth if it's going to work, this would be so cool. But we're going to, we're basically doing it for London right now. It's generating that chat GPT AI summary um, using GPT-4. It might take a little bit longer. And I'll show you the speed difference with 3.5 turbo as well. But remember, once it's done, it will only revalidate every 60 seconds. So users won't actually see this uh, every single time. Okay. So I just want to check something here. Um, let's go back over here. Let's just see. Did it um, actually... Okay, so it's come back with some data. Look at this, guys. It used up total tokens 983. Um, and it's doing it a few times over. So let's see. Maybe I refreshed it a few times. Oh, guys, look at that. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for some weather action. I'm Sunny coming live from the Papa Fam headquarters, bringing you a fantastic summary of today's weather for the lovely city of London. All right, folks, get ready because you got some interesting weather coming your way. The current temperature is sitting at a cool nine degrees Celsius. Yes, it is. With a wind speed of 9.2. There we go. And then coming from the 11 and 116 degrees direction. Awesome. I think I messed that up. That should be kilometers per hour. <laughs> As for the weather code, it's at 80, which means we've got some light rain showers. And that's perfect. Bang on. We'll be experiencing some light rain, da da da. But no, don't worry, snow lovers, because there won't be any snow for today. In terms of humidity, da da da. And then now, for those of you who are concerned about the UV index, it will range from 0 to 5.4. So make sure you wear some SPF if you're going outside because it's, if it's higher than 3, just to be on the safe side. And then it even gives you a little joke, right? Why don't meteorologists like to dine outdoors? Because it's too windy, but dum dum. Okay, that's jokes, right? So in this case, now, if I go to United Arab Emirates, and let's go to Dubai and hit enter. Now you can see us loading city weather information for Dubai. And remember, as I said, GPT-4 will take a little bit longer, right? So just something to remember. Now, I want to show you something. Once this is loaded, it's really worth mentioning. It will cache the previous page and it will do it for every 60 seconds based on if someone has visited. So they won't see this long loading procedure, right? It's only the first user to ever hit that page. So after that, it will happen in the background and the user will see the previous summary. And then every hour, it would always be up to date. So it's actually really, really nice as as to how this will work right so let's go ahead and see this right now so after remember again gpt4 a little bit slower i will show you the difference between 3.5 turbo and 4 but this is absolutely phenomenal because once this loads out it will be incredible and i'll show you again remember it will actually go ahead and have a really nice effect once you have the caching in place so let's go ahead and see um once that's done just give it just give it some um, a moment right so this will go ahead and do its thing and the data is right so in this case it's still coming back from us right so let it do its thing right uh again the demo goes always against me so right now and there you go you can see it look good morning everyone this is sunny coming from a beautiful city of dubai the current temperature is a warm 28 yeah we go wind 15.6 kilometers oh yes i definitely need to change that uh, as we progress our day, temperatures will rise. That's awesome stuff. Look at that. The only thing is the time came back weird. That's, again, strange. Uh, this means today is... Oh, because I... Okay. So, again, remember, disable your cache, right? So, let's refresh. Let's let it do one more build for that. Uh, that was my fault. Again, this is something which I'm really happy you actually saw because caching can be a bit of a concern, especially when you're coding. You might be like, hang on, all my code is sound. Why is this happening, right? Um so yeah this is gonna be a bit of an issue so 
Uh, error React context when we have several components. Yeah, React context is when you're basically you're probably using a client. You need to have a client component. Um, you need to convert something to a client component. Again, we cover this in zero to four stack error. It's a bit difficult to talk to you right now on the stream, but definitely check out my Next.js tutorial if you're getting errors like you know something is unavailable in server components uh, on my channel. It's an Next.js 13 crash course, right? It's basically a crash course telling you how to convert things over and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So in this case, we'll give this a second to do its thing and I will show you. So um, it's actually not too bad waiting for this in that sense. So you don't like, obviously this would be a bit long for a user in my opinion. And again, once you deploy to the cell, it's worth mentioning that anything over 10 seconds in a cloud function requires their paid platform, right? So uh, it can take a little bit extra. So now you can see, look, the time came in after we cleared the cache and then bam, look at that. It's really, really nice. And it tells us that Dubai is going to be blazing hot, essentially, right? Hello, folks. Sunny here, coming to you live from the pop And now I want to show you something, okay? Let's go back to London. And then you're probably thinking, oh, no, but it's going to load all that long time again. Bam. See how it's really fast, right? Once it's done it once, it's cached it. And if we go back to Dubai, boom. That's what I'm talking about, right? So that's actually really powerful because now this will be cached on the Vercel, right? Vercel side. So what will happen is it won't have to go ahead and redeploy those uh, or, or figure out those static assets. It will only do it after 60 seconds uh, whereby somebody will see this. It will trigger the rebuild in the background and then the next person to come on will get the new version, right? But in this case, in weather sense, you don't really care if it's like, you know, an, a minute out or something like that. It doesn't really make a difference, right? Because you're getting the overall day summary of weather. So this is actually really, really awesome. So in this case, you've got a nice little setup. Now, I would probably recommend you change that revalidate to even a day because you don't need to know per hour the difference. So I'd probably change this to be like 60 times by 12, um, uh, 24, sorry. So probably 1, 4, 40. So every day, it would pre pretty much re revalidate, but just so you can, you know, it's kind of doing this, right? Um, why not show about it after it gets fresh? Show it then too. Why not show all the stuff about chat GPT for section after it gets fresh and show it too? You can do. Remember, right now, the way we've implemented it is this, uh, this is a blocking component, right? So I've just done it at the top level. If you really want, you can go ahead, refactor it around, change things up. Um, really is, is your call, right? Honestly, I want you to extend this app and change it up. You can do it as you wish. Right now, I've simply got a loader showing because it's blocking at the top level, okay? Um, so now what I need to do is I want to showcase something. I want to show you the speed difference of if you haven't got GPT-4 access, how can you do this build, right? So all you need to do is change the model here to GPT-3.5 dash turbo. And there's other models as well, right? So you don't have to just use these. But let's go ahead and try somewhere new now. All right. So Sports on Tap says, Wow, well, Sunny is smashing it. Thank you so much, dude. Albania. Let's do um, somewhere like Samil. So now notice the speed difference here, right? There will be a noticeable speed difference. This will be actually a lot quicker than GPT-4. Although the answer may not be as profound, but it would be something to just bear in mind. It would also be a lot cheaper than GPT-4. So you see how that was a lot faster. Yeah, and it's still pretty decent, right? Like I would still accept that fully, right? And then if we go to United Kingdom, we go to London, for example, our previous value will still be cached, I believe. So yeah, it's still cached, right? And if we go back to United Kingdom and let's go to like, for example, Manchester, right? Manchester, boom. Now you'll see again, it's loading that one because it hasn't fetched that previously. So this is a really nice balance between Next.js 13, some new features, a lot of the sort of, you know, uh, magic behind, you know, ISR, that kind of thing, and how it can fetch and cache on the Vercel side. But um, something to definitely mention, Kakashi said, what if you saw info about Lasso Town and we tried to access it later response from China, it would be the same. Um, provided it's within the revalidation window, yes. But look at that. It's a lot faster doing it from um gpt 3.5 i would recommend you probably use this for this approach because it's really not gonna be such a big difference except i'll be honest with you it'll be a lot cheaper to do gpt 3.5 okay but it's you can do it as you saw for yourself we can use gpt4 to get a really more like high level accurate remember gpt4 will give you a better answer it's a lot more of a higher trained model and so forth right 
Um, he goes, look, Samoa and Google, how beautiful beaches out. Ah, nice. All right, so in that case, that's awesome. So let's, I think at this point, guys, we are ready to deploy, right? So we're about to go ahead and deploy this bad boy of an app, right? We're almost literally so close to 500 likes as well. Absolutely awesome. Like this video is going to blow past a thousand. I already know it, right? So this is absolutely huge. Let's go ahead and deploy this thing. So first thing I want you to do is you can go into your... Um, uh, browser so you need to i'm going to show you a few ways right so you can you can actually go ahead and um inside of vassell so so you want to go to vassell and type in cli so type go to google type in vassell cli install this cli right so you want to go ahead and install this globally i've already done it so you don't need to i don't need to do it now at this point i'll show you a very easy way to install you can do it with github but i'll show you an even easier way so at this point go to the top level of your app over here and i want you to type in vassell right now what this will do is it will set up a and build a kind of app for you so set up and deploy yes right now it's worth mentioning that i have set up a team okay if you did deploy it on some, on a normal hobby plan so the normal hobby plan will basically fail now the reason why it will fail is because when it does that chat gpt step that call that functional that sort of functional um when i say fun uh, cloud function it's essentially when it uses uh, makes that request to the post endpoint it's going to take longer than 10 seconds and because it takes longer than 10 seconds to do that call it's actually not allowed in the hobby plan so anything over 10 seconds you need a paid plan so you can go ahead and do it but you could basically dummy it up and make it a bit simpler so it maybe didn't take as long or use a simpler model which is even quicker but it might just not be as efficient or better as, as high quality an answer but in this case i went ahead and set up a youtube team on vassell and this one is actually going to allow you to go ahead and do it so i on Vassell, you can do that. I'm going to link to an existing project. No project name, steps in, weather app, YouTube directory. Yes. And then so forth. So when you deploy it uh, on a team, you don't have that limit of 10 seconds, right? Want to modify these settings? No, that's fine. And it will deploy. Now, here is a bit I want you to pay attention to. It will show you an inspect. Now, this deployment will fail. And I'll tell you why it will fail because we haven't got the environment stuff set up. So I've got a trial. You can also get a 14 day trial just to try this out as well. So set up a team account. So you just go here and you set up a team. They blocked one of mine because they got spammed with a, on a YouTube build. But your personal account, a hobby one, will not be enough to get past that 10 second limit when you're basically using GPT. All right. So now I want you to go, I want you to go to your overview, step zen, whether YouTube app. And I want you to go to your settings and here environment variables. So here, what I want you to do is go over to your environment variables and basically hit enter, right? So I'm going to hide the screen because I don't want to reveal my key. So hit enter. Now you're inside your environment variables file. I want you to select everything with command A and I want you to hit copy, okay? Now, once you've hit copy, I want you to go back over to your, um, to th this screen right here. And I want you to paste, okay? So you're going to paste here. So I'm going to go ahead and paste now. So I'm pasting. And then what we'll do is I'm going to click on save. So it shows me three things, environment, production. So I've actually pasted it in. So I pasted those values in there. And then it's got production, uh, preview development. And then I'm going to click on save, okay? And as you can see now, I've got those three things. Now, the only thing I need to change the API URL and the, um, yeah, the API URL. So this one, I've set it to localhost by accident, right? So this one, localhost. So here, what you want to do is you want to edit this because this has to be the actual value that we deploy our graph, um, our steps and API to. So here, you want this to become this, your API URL. So when you start up your step Zen, it will tell you what it is. And this is your live step Zen deployed URL. And, you, and that automatically gets deployed for you every time you start it up, right? So we're going to go ahead and click save. Now I have my step Zen key. I have my open AI key and I have my API URL all set. And then what we want to do is we want to re-trigger our build. Okay. So we want to go back to here and I'm going to go ahead and type in the cell dash dash prod. Cool. And now we'll do that. Now, once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and do the following. So let that do its thing. And what I will do is after this build, I will go ahead and cut my uh, key so that way it doesn't go crazy on the billing um, because obviously it's going to be live afterwards. So this will now trigger a build. 
okay and then it will trigger the build and as you can see here it's going to start my build off and start basically preparing everything it needs to get it up and running okay so let that do its thing pretty chill this is oh one like away from 500 likes no way that is so cool let's go i want to get some hyped up music okay let's see if it works right i'm guaranteed there's probably going to be an error but if it's not amazing yeah because there's always some error when you're de dealing with this stuff that's yeah all right so assigning the domains let's click on it boom it gives me the url let's go to the country i'm going to go to united arab emirates dubai let's see did it does it crash on me does it work does it you know okay okay i'm not celebrating yet i'm not celebrating just yet at this point if you're on a hobby plan it will likely fail because it will take longer than 10 seconds so yes you'd have to go to the the pro plan on Vercel. all right so Vercel, create a team make it a pro plan you get a 14 day trial so you can try it out but let's see let's go that's what i'm talking about guys it worked that's so sick and it works on a production website you guys can feel free right now to go to the chat look literally go to that website look i just posted it in the in the chat yeah boom look go there right now and it will work that is absolutely sick yeah so feel free for yourself and in the chat right now let me know is that page loading for you right i want to see right now is that page actually loading for you yeah and you guys can see for yourself on the live stream that i'm not capping that's a real website i just posted it in the chat so you can feel free to check it out and let me know in the comments is that loading if it is loading amazing stuff yeah steve james says loaded right away that's what i'm talking about yes and even on the phone it will load you'll get the nice ai summary everything eduardo says uh, nice jay says works perfectly that's what i'm talking about first time as well right it's absolutely amazing stuff and uh, siang says works perfectly that's the energy we need guys you see how the power of next.js 13.2 all that 13.3 all came together the caching the way it all works oh it's just beautiful with that said before i get absolutely ripped apart on uh kakashi says let's check i'll let it go for like five minutes and then i'll cut my key otherwise everyone's gonna go crazy on that url so when you if you're watching the replay of this it probably that url will not work because i will actually cut my key um but yeah it's sick sunny well done learn so many things from you thank you for sharing it for free you're absolutely welcome squeezy uh simon says awesome deepak says works very well i'm so happy to hear that guys that has absolutely made my day uh and i want to show you guys as well make sure when you're in Vercel yeah you're gonna have to have that pro you can use the pro trial yeah but the reason why if you don't have that pro trial then it's gonna cause you an issue right remember I, it's gmt by the way the time zone because i set it to gmt in the code remember you can set that to your local by adding additional code feel free yeah but if you don't have this pro trial your functions will time out okay so that's definitely something that will happen now if i go to live i can see probably people are probably trying to mess around with it so let someone checked out nairobi someone's checking out so now someone just went to nairobi someone went to dubai dubai prague look at this <laughs> i can see all your i can see what you lot are doing mr sagu at georgetown adra look at that that's, that's pretty sick i can let you see you guys using it <laughs> apoko right guys with that i think i need to actually cut that key because it's gonna go mad on my uh my quota so let's go to my i'll show you how to do it um where is it open ai you have like you have literally a few seconds and then i'm going and i'm cutting it off so i'm going to my api keys my youtube demo key and i'm revoking that key so now if you try and do it unfortunately it will not work all right so i apologize guys i just don't want to get killed on that that quarter because obviously it's it's going to cost every time you do it it's a demo you get the point all right but otherwise um let me go back now to And I want to go to the deployments and we should get a few errors, I reckon now. So let me know, has it stopped working now? Because it probably would have stopped working now. It will, the good thing is though, it will show you still the cached versions, right? So in this case, 
Yeah, there you go. It stopped now. Yeah, there you go. There, yeah. Error. Yeah. So now everyone's starting to get the error. Dubai would still work, but there you go. Yeah, now, now it's starting to cut through. So you can see what I just did there, right? So when I revoked the key, it was a live demonstration of how it will stop the flow of happening because you've now revoked that key, which means that further attempts to go ahead and use that won't work, right? So it's, it's just handy kind of to demonstrate that to you as well. So if I was to go here now, if I went to United Arab Emirates, it most likely would show me Dubai, right? Unless it wouldn't because it's probably, yeah, it wouldn't show me. Yeah, nice. Yeah, so that's actually, that's actually perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to show you guys. Because um, I even got you a chance to showcase how it would... Um, how it would stop so um showing last day or after the refresh yes exactly yeah and in this case i don't think this will load okay it does work but okay i mean i'm gonna probably bring it i don't know we'll see anyway yeah uh Jibrin says your step-by-step -step process of teaching in your tour is truly impressive and you're breaking down complex in a way that's easy to understand and follow along keep all the good work dude i appreciate you so much i love comments like that thank you so much um, for your support I just want to see if this is actually going to stop working because it should yeah now it's not working good yeah so now it's not working so this one shouldn't work Abbey Wood unless someone went to Abbey Wood before right but this one should probably stop working now unless I've I'm looking at the wrong yeah now this one this one should stop working um, unless it's got the key so Jay says it doesn't work yeah I just want to prove a point to myself <laughs> yeah so I, I know for, for, for a fact but in this case you can see if we play the new logs we should get loads of errors here so we've got data is get weather summary next abbey wood data is palumpa okay so it's still actually giving me the the, the things okay what well, i'm gonna do i'm just gonna revoke these keys because I, I feel like i might have slipped the key and to be honest let's go and what's that say? Uh, which course is this? Okay, but we don't want you know. Okay, that's fine. So for now, that's good. I'll do the trick. Yeah, cool. With that said, guys, that was absolutely amazing. Uh, you guys got to see a whole thing about it, like a whole realistic use case of that entire build. I want to see if I can take that down. I'll take it down afterwards. That's fine. Okay, but otherwise, um, yeah, this was huge. That was a huge build, right? Let's jump through what we talked about today in today's video, right? So not only, let me get some some decent track behind it. Right, I think there's only... Yeah, so that's fine. This will do. Right, so today we went ahead and broke down an entire crazy weather app, right? So not only was it able to actually have a huge, a beautiful UI that's fully responsive. So you guys saw for yourself how we can go ahead and build something just like this. Oh, there we go. That's why it's, it's come off here. Yeah. Um, not only was it uh, able to go ahead and you build something fully responsive, absolutely gorgeous to look at, but we also got exposure to things like Tremor 2.0, right? You also got exposure to Step Zen. Now, Step Zen was incredible for today because you saw yourself in such an app where it really can be complicated, right? To go ahead and actually build out a GraphQL um, endpoint or like a backend. Step Zen made it like we didn't even have to think about it. All we had to do was Step Zen curl import and then a minor change in the schema and the whole thing just worked. We got an amazing like, you know, it, it simplified the entire process. I'll be honest, when I set up GraphQL endpoints, I'm always like trying to remember how the hell to write the schema perfectly and all this kind of stuff. Now with StepZen's uh, support, you know, it makes things so easy. So I'm going to be definitely doing more videos with StepZen. I truly find it's an amazing platform, an amazing way to do things. And you guys saw yourselves the true power behind Next.js 13.3, right? And Next.js 13 and, and the way we can have this caching, the revalidation, the way the initial load might be long, but if you have a lot of users, it really won't matter because only one user is going to have to go through that loading screen and then it's going to be cached and it can revalidate. So everyone will get this instant experience, which is just game changer, right? It also means that you're not going to spam your GPT quota, even if you had a million customers. It's only going to go ahead and send the uh, hit the GPT uh, API if it's an uncached page, right? So all I would recommend then is you set your revalidate period a little bit higher. 
right so that's all i will go ahead and say but otherwise you guys learned a huge amount in today's build make sure you smash that thumbs up button tailwind typescript deployment to vassell tremor 2.0 remember guys if you want to go ahead and absolutely you know excel keep learning at this speed keep learning at this pace then check us out at popperreact.com forward slash course zero to four stack here as a community you want to be a part of we've got module content we've got a community we've i go ahead and do coaching calls every wednesday so you can literally talk to me as we we go ahead and build out projects just like this right so we've got some awesome members i see loads of them in the community right now in the chat pat Peacher, we've got natasha awesome members of the community so it's absolutely amazing stuff right someone asked if i'll add a new api key after the stream and it will work fine i'll add a new api key after the stream but then i won't expose it and i'll probably take down that deployment because i don't want to have that deployment up because if that video blows up i'm going to be rammed on a quota <laughs> right so in this case you guys can feel free to go ahead and check it out right but yeah zero to full stack hero place to be and if you want daily coding problems the university of code definitely check it out it's worth it it's only 4.99 a month you literally get coding problems delivered to you every day right which is honestly it's a huge amount of work to get that to you so it's something that we want to do to give back and then we do the 4.99 a month just to support our effort in doing that because we have to have a way that can justify it to allow us to be able to keep doing that right so we massively appreciate you guys this has been an awesome video and as always guys smash the thumbs up button subscribe if you haven't already and uh, yeah i'm going to read some of the comments before we sign out on this build i can see you guys because i just completely skipped over a lot of you guys absolutely love the build i see it um I can see you guys asking you checked loads of locations like Bucharest, India. That's awesome. Brazil was also checking things out. Step says, Sonny, you're such a wonderful human. Thanks for the work you do. Thanks for the energy you spread. Thanks for your team too. Team appreciates you, dude. Um Patty says, weather forecast straight from Papa React. That's amazing. Um, I checked Jibrin's uh comment. I was absolutely stunned. Thank you so much, dude. Um, Albi says, cool video with nice technology, amazing site. Augustine says, thank you. Thank you for tuning in, dude. Uh, Tilak says, can we use a GPT-4 for free? You will actually, I don't know if you get a quota for, for, for free with four, but you get a quota at some point with any of these. And GPT-4 requires you to have access to the uh, early wait list. Okay, so make sure you check that out. Edwin says, joined in a bit late, but love from Texas, USA. That's what I'm talking about. We've got Americans in the house. What's up, guys? And um, yeah, Simon says, we love you, I love you too, guys. Jibberin says, go. I appreciate you all. Natasha says, ciao, Sunny. Thanks for all. Ciao, guys. Thank you for tuning in. You know that we have to end it the way we, we do things, right? The only the right way to end it out. Make sure you give this a try. All the code is going to be on the GitHub repo. I recommend you go and check it out. Um, thanks, Sunny. What you do every time you show the <laughs> environment file for us. I know every time I slip it at the end. I'm like, that's all right. It's all right. It's fine. I just change all the keys afterwards. So that way it's completely irrelevant. And it also shows you what to do if you end up making that mistake. But yeah, we have tons of content coming out every week. So make sure you turn on that little bell notification icon. Me and Jay are working overtime to get more content in Zero to Full Stack Hero, more content on YouTube, more content from our amazing partners. And yeah, we've got so much fun stuff happening. You might even see me at some in-person conferences and events this year, right? Me and the team, we're, going, we're doing big things, guys. I love every single one of you. This has been your boy, Papa React, and I will see you in the next video. When that beat drops, you know what to do. Sign out the way we do it, install. Loads of lessons were learned today. Caching, technology, the, the next J is open AI, all this good stuff. Absolutely crazy stuff. Thank you guys. Peace.